Nichols away with their season openers. They begin their quest for three straight Southland titles. This is a non-conference game, Division I versus Division II, and that is a touchback, and we'll see the Lincoln offense out first. The Lincoln Blue Tigers. I think they're the only Blue Tigers in the country, Could Jack. Be. I don't think there's another one. You're going to see a little history tonight. Well, they are led by senior quarterback Josh Cartwright. You know, we're going to talk about a lot of well-traveled players in mm -hmm. this game here today. Here's a guy who hits his fourth stop, comes over after two years in Huntsville at Alabama A&M. Prior to that, a year at Southwestern Community College out in California. Started his career at FAU, where he redshirted, never took a snap. But he has a lot of talent, very quick, dual-threat type guy. And they begin from the 25. And it's a keeper, and you can see right away the mobility of Cartwright. Good gain there on first down, Ronnie. Pick up a five. Josh Cartwright, well-traveled. He's picked up a lot of frequent flyer miles. Grew up in the Miami area, played out. According to their coaching staff. On second down. It's a handoff to Tory Hicks. And a nice stop made in space. With experience returning on the offensive side, the footballer can receive it and run it a little bit. At over 300 yards combined offense uh, back in 2019. So it's third down. Lincoln coming off a year. They play in the MIAA. They're a Division II school. They were 1 in 10. They have struggled mightily over the course of really the past decade. Here's a big third down and a flag. And it is on the offense, a full start. Well, a timeout is being taken. I'm not sure who took the timeout. I think it, I think it was the uh, the Blue Tigers, Lincoln University of Missouri, who called the timeout there. Yeah, it looked initially like a signal on, on a full start. Apologies there. So now, you know, it's worth noting for Lincoln. We were talking about this earlier, what they've had to do. Like Nichols, back in, uh, it's crazy. you got to go all the way back now to 2019 and then really the 2020 spring. But they only had two weeks of spring practice. We're shut down. Of course, we're talking about a guy in uh, Malik Hoskins who's only his first year as the full-time head coach. Two weeks of spring practice. He didn't see his team again till the fall. The MIAA canceled their season outright. They're not playing in the spring. So these guys have only had a couple of practices, and they've been dealing with the snow here for the past three weeks. I mean, and, and quite the journey to get here. Like, you know, fortunately for the Colonels, they did not just mail it in and say, hey, we can't get here. It took them 19 hours on a, on a bus ride that should have taken normally about 11 or 12 at the most. Third down and four. It's a designed run for Cartwright and a great hit by Kevin Johnson. The senior from New Orleans, who last year had 43 tackles. Johnson, a guy who's just gotten better and better as a physical presence for this defense. Guy who can really move at 6'2", 215. So Clayton Winkler to punt. And K.J. Franklin awaits the sophomore from Prairieville at a terrific freshman season for the Colonels. High snap. And a directional kick that will sail out of bounds. Nichols is going to get terrific starting field position here on their first off. So here comes Nichols, the offense out on the field for the first time in this spring FCS campaign, two minutes into the first quarter, led by Lindsey Scott. We talked about him in the open. The road to Nichols, now his fourth stop, his third Division I school, but he has never taken a Division I snap. Got to go back to 2017, leading East Mississippi Community College the last time he took a college snap. On first down, he throws, and there is Dejon Dixon all the way across midfield inside the...
five on your screen there on the starters graphic. <laughs> Catching Lincoln with their hands on their hips. I mean, they're going quick. Offensive coordinator Rob Christopher has talked about, Ronnie, the luxury of how many weapons he has in this offense. See what they do here. On a third down and three. It's Scott to throw again. There is Costly, breaks a tackle. And that's enough for a first down. Another completion for Lindsey Scott. Costly, the junior from Vachery, picks up the first. Tim Rebo, when he talks about his, his wide receiver core, just raves, says it might be the best group he's ever coached. And according to Rob Christfell, it is the Christfell, it's the best uh, group he's coached in over 30 years as an offensive uh, uh, assistant. Nichols inside the Louisiana propane red zone, a handoff to Julian Gums. And the junior from New Orleans works it inside the 15. Gums coming off a year where he rushed for over 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns, both program records. And asking Tim Rebo about the next station's development, it's the way he reads, the way he works with his offensive line, and also working with a new quarterback, what he can do in pass protection. Here's a second down. Scott on the caper. This is what he can do. And the C's part for six. Lindsey Scott into the end zone for the first time as a colonel. And Nichols on the board, just about four minutes in. Lindsey Scott Jr. with his first touchdown in many a year. Big open hole. He's super quick. He's a powerful runner at that. And that was easy. And you could see the celebration uh, once he got to the end zone. Gavin Lassane on for the point after. Sophomore from Raceland. And we've got a flag down. Lindsey Scott last scored a touchdown in 2017, so three and a half years ago. Think about how, uh, how different things were three and a half years ago than they are now. He can say that again. So it was on Nichols. This will back them up a couple of yards for the extra point for Gavin Lassane. Sophomore from Raceland, I mentioned, who last year made 22 of his 23 extra points. He made his final 22, missed one in the opener against Kansas State. And this one is away, and he missed it to the right. So there's the announcer's jinx on Lassane. Nichols does get on the board with six. And for Lindsey Scott, you mentioned the last time that he got into the end zone, 2017, the NJCAA National Championship game. Got to go back to December the 4th of 2017. It's been over 1,100 days. Uh, you can see the joy on his face, and uh, it's got to be a big moment for that young man and his family. And you know, as great a, of a player as Chase Forcade was here for the last four years at quarterback, um, they, they feel really good uh, out, of, out of the way Lindsey Scott's kind of adapted to this community, to this team. He was a part of the team a couple of years ago, got a chance to see Forcade work and do his thing, and he's now taken over that leadership role, changed his number to zero. I don't know about that number, but he's the guy now for the Colonels. Tuss, Tuss. Nichols on that drive, six plays, 51 yards for our Parish Wealth Partners drive summary. Capped off by the Lindsey Scott 13-yard touchdown run. So Nichols off to a nice start here offensively, and now they will kick it away again with Craig Walker. What a luxury on that first kickoff, run! He has to be a welcome sight for Tim Rebo to see his kicker put one in the end zone. Only 12 touchbacks last year as a team for Nichols. 
This one is a little bit shorter, but still into the end zone. Back and there's to back. back to man, that didn't I don't think happen all year last year for Nichols. So that has to feel pretty darn good. Lincoln will make their way back onto the field here offensively. You know, they had a little bit of success in that first drive running the football, got stopped on third down. What do they need to do to be competitive here against a terrific defense and an FCS team on the road? Well, they've got to, one, not turn the football over, right? And, two, they've got to eat clock. And in order to eat clock, you've got to keep it on the ground, which is what the, the Lincoln University of Missouri Blue Tigers do well is they run the football. But they're going to have to just grind out first downs, eat the clock, and then hope they don't turn it over and, and, and get turnovers on defense. So Cartwright is back to work from his 25. Pressure coming. He eludes it. And he's got some room to run. Oh, he slipped down. Delry Oob in on the stop along with Elijah Reams. Well, that'll be a loss. So that becomes a three-yard loss. Nichols continuing to run bodies out of the field here, trying to get a lot of guys involved. On second and 13, it's a handoff to Hosea Franklin, and he is drilled. Kevin Johnson again. His second TFL in this game already. He's been all over the place. And third down and forever coming up as we look at the, def the defensive starters here for Nichols. Only four starters return, Ronnie, from that 2019 group. Notably absent, of course, Soli Lash graduates as the one of the greatest to ever wear the red and gray. But some talent on the defensive line. Perry Gancy, a guy Tim Rebo likes a lot. And in the secondary, Kevin Moore may be one of the best in the nation. Again, our starters are brought to you by Etel Business. Here's a deep pass, and tipped up and caught by Kevin Johnson. Off the deflection from Keontae Williams. What a terrific defensive play. So a couple TFLs, an interception for Johnson, which is the, the second of his career. First down, Nichols. Now, that was a fantastic play by Kevin Johnson, who's just exploded on the scene early in this game. But uh, not a bad uh, shot down the field by jo Josh Cartwright, underthrown just a little bit. Colonel's able to get a hand on it, tip it up, and Johnny on the spot was the senior, Kevin Johnson. The interception for Johnson, the second of his Colonel career, got to go back to October the 6th of 2018. From the 46, Nichols back to work with Lindsey Scott. Over the middle, Dejan Dixon. And he's right near the 35-yard line. Another big pickup there. Give him 21 more. But well, Dejan Dixon is such a physical presence. I mean, there's nobody that can match up with him on the other side of the football. As long as he's engaged and making good cuts, he's going to be unstoppable. On first and 10, Scott throwing. Dixon once again. And he's turned down right near the first down marker. We'll see if they do indeed wave it forward. And it looks like they will. You know, Dixon last year only played in nine games against Central Arkansas in Nichols' home opener back on October the 5th of 2019. This, of course, we're saying last year. It's really 2019. But broke his collarbone, missed five games, still was over 1,000 yards. Fresh set of downs. Scott. K.J. Franklin wrestled down right at the 20. Pick up of about four or five. I mean, that's just like a nice run and play, just that, that short passing game, quick throwing. Lindsey Scott's been pretty accurate other than just one throw in this game. He's putting it on the money, and he's got special, special skilled players. He's five of six for 63 yards. Motion man here, Tevin Bush, the West Virginia transfer. He has all kinds of speed, and he has the touchdown. Tevin Bush from 20 yards out, and Nichols up a couple scores, not even four minutes in. Now, Tevin Bush, as you mentioned, tremendous speed. He, he, uh, he went to Landry Walker in New Orleans, a big-time program, went up to West Virginia. Here he is back home in his home state, and he just hit the corner, got some great blocking from the wide receivers. 
and nobody was going to come anywhere near him. Then the, the defenders didn't even get a hand on him. Spent three years at West Virginia as the kick is away from Gavin Lassane, and that one is good. And it's 13 nothing. Three years for him, Ronnie, at West Virginia. Didn't carry the ball a ton. He was actually a running back as a freshman, moved into his more natural slot position. Boy, Rob Christopher was raving to us about what he can do for this offense. He is so versatile with his speed and the way that he can run routes, but also take the ball like that out of the backfield. Well, when you've got the dynamic mobile quarterback who can throw it and run it, and the defense has to worry about that, and then you've got, you know, the speed, the reverses, and the handoffs. I mean, just so many weapons, it makes it difficult for the defense to key on one thing to stop. Our Parish Wealth Partners drive summary. Another quick one for the Colonels. Four plays, 54 yards. Didn't take much time at all, and Tevin Bush caps it with a 20-yard touchdown run. Nichols off and running here at home. Again, first game in 440 days for Nichols. Got to go back to their second-round loss in the 2019 FCS playoffs to North Dakota State. First home game, you had seven more days to that. Their FCS round one a game against North Dakota. Craig Walker, who's had two touchbacks already, boots this one away. It's shorter, and waving for a fair catch, Hosea Franklin. So this kickoff team... Uh this kickoff group, they may not get a return all year, huh? Between kicking it in the end zone and the fact that you can call a touchback, uh, these guys may just be running 60-yard sprints the rest of the year. I can tell you that is a welcome sight for Brian Wallace, the safeties and special teams coach, if that's the case, considering that they were one of the worst nationally at defending kicks last season. Well, it can't be a better start here if you're Nichols. Couple drives, couple of scores. The defense is flying around. You know, there's there's different storylines we're looking for in this game. Now, Lincoln, of course, being a Division II opponent, they have not practiced much. They're trying to test themselves, see where they're at. But for Nichols, trying to get a lot of bodies on the field. Offside. And it's 49 on the kicking team, five yards to 25 yard line. First down, Lincoln. That was our uh, referee, by the way, Ed Bourgeois, mentioning the offside call. But just going off of Nichols, Ronnie, a chance for them to really see what they have. Run a lot of guys out there. So Lincoln back to work from the 30-yard line, trailing 13-0. Handoff this time to Hicks. Has some speed. Broke a couple of tackles. Got around the arms of Jordan Jackson and works forward for about seven or eight. One of the better plays uh, of so far for Lincoln University. That's what Lincoln wants to do, pick up four or five yards on the ground on first down to give themselves a a chance to open up the playbook. Handoff this time to Franklin, and he's driven to the turf on a nice play defensively made by Pig Cage, freshman out of Rummel, the Kenner native, three-star products. And it brings up third down. At that time, Oob did a nice job, 52 to linebacker, middle uh, Mike linebacker who did a nice job getting up field to kind of disrupt the play. You know, we're seeing that speed handoff. If you're Lincoln, you fake it and keep it. The backside was open. Pig Cage, a brother of Quincy who's a receiver on this team. Four sets of brothers on this Nichols roster. That's pretty crazy. It is. Four sib- sets of siblings. Third down and four for Josh Cartwright and company. We're under seven to go in the first. And we have a flag down. You know what that tells you, though? Timeout. It tells you you that that people enjoy playing here for for Coach Rebo and this Nichols program because if the older brother comes, has a bad experience, not happy in Thibodeau, whatever the case may be, the the younger brother is not going to come. And uh, you see the fact that, you have three of the four sets of siblings. One's a senior, one's a freshman. So the family is enjoying their experience. They like being a part of this program, and that's a great sign. That's a great point. And, you know, we mentioned Lindsey Scott and what he's doing at quarterback today. His younger brother, Logan, a preferred walk-on on this team. We will probably see him later today as well, a defensive back. So, yeah, it's just it's a family-type atmosphere that Tim Rebo has built. And, you know, you mentioned just how many Louisiana players are on this roster, 102 from Louisiana. 
Here's a look at what Nichols has done over the course of these last three years, the kind of success they've had. We've talked about the three straight FCS playoff appearances, back-to-back -back Southland titles. Both of those marks are program first. The consistency they have built year in, year out is very impressive because of the kind of players they have been able to get, all, really all from Louisiana. 102 players from the state of Louisiana, 88 from those in, within about a 90-mile radius of, of Thibodeau. That's incredible. Third down and four. Nichols brings the blitz. Cartwright throws. See if they give Franklin forward progress here. It was drilled quickly by Kevin Moore right at the get sticks. The first. Yeah, he should have enough for a first down. And Lincoln will move the chains. Yep. Now Kevin Moore just made that tackle. Senior out of Lafayette. Spent two years at Texas Tech where he was primarily on special teams and a linebacker and well, all he did was come over last year in 2019, Ronnie, and 112 tackles led the team in second in the Southland Conference. You look at the transfers that Tim Rebo has. You've got, a, you got a West Virginia, a Texas Tech, an LSU, a Missouri. I mean, that's pretty big time. Fresh set of downs. Cartwright on Ooh. the keeper. Big hit right around midfield. You mentioned Kevin Moore. He came up from that safety spot and uh, laid the lumber. Another look at this one. By the way, our replays today brought to you by Off the Hook. I'll tell you who was in on that stop as well. Who Tommy Rybacki, defensive coordinator, is very high on. Miles Veen, the nose guard, fifth-year senior out of New Orleans. He's a guy who was at New Mexico State, someone who can really clog those gaps in the interior. Second down and five. We approach five to go in the first quarter. Cartwright to throw, and that is too far for Krishan Robinson. As coverage by Jarius Monroe, sophomore out of Laplace, who had a terrific freshman season, second on the team in pass breakups with 13, and it brings up a third down. Well, we talked to, when we talked to the Lincoln uh, coaching staff, they were concerned about when they had to throw the football. They, their, their strength is running the ball. They know their quarterback, Josh Cartwright, the strength for him is running the football. So they want to be in 50-50 positions, not behind the chains third and long. At the Division II level in 2019, 23% on third down. And with the play clock down again, Malik Hoskins has to burn another timeout. timeout. Lincoln, their third and final. Well, there you go, your three first-half timeouts with about six minutes to go in the first quarter. And part of that, Ronnie, is the lack of practice time these guys have had. These guys have had. You know, we were talking to Malik Hoskins about what they've been able to do with the snow, the weather. They don't have an indoor facility at Lincoln. That's, you know, one of the reasons they wanted to play this game was, number one, to see where they're at, but, you know, really be able to get their brand out there and let people know what they're dealing with. They're playing in a terrific conference. The MIAA, for people who don't know, at the Division II level, Malik Hoskins says it's almost like an FCS conference playing Division II football. They have a lot of terrific teams in there. They are, and unfortunately, you know, they finished 11th out of 12th last year in that conference. And while they're trying to build some things, they are in such a tough conference. But, uh, you know, they, they, they sounded like things are moving in the right direction. They're doing a better job of recruiting. And, um, and hey, this is a learning experience for this program. Only nine players in their past signing class, so numbers have been an issue. Here's third down and five. Motion man is Hicks. And the handoff this time to Franklin. And there he goes. Burst of speed inside the 30. And out of bounds right around the 25. Franklin is a terrific back. Redshirt junior out of Memphis. Last year set the MIAA in Single season record at Lincoln for rushing. He was over 1,300 yards, about six per carry. So he's a guy who can certainly get it going if he has space. Malik uh, Hoskins talks about how good his vision is. Well, the vision, but also his speed. Tremendous speed for a guy that's only 5'7", 180 pounds, but he rushed for over 1,300 yards a year ago. Keeper for Cartwright, and he is swallowed up. That is Pig Cage in the backfield awfully quick. And the freshman out of Kenner with another huge hit. He was an all-state pick out of Rummel last, uh, well, a couple years ago, I should say. 
I don't know if that was a predetermined play or any sort of read, but if it was a read, it wasn't the right one because as soon as he faked that handoff, Pig was right there for the for the for the big cleanup. A four yard loss. Second down and fourteen. Cart right in the flat, it's Hicks. And Nichols finally brings him down inside the 30. Delry Oob in on the stop again. Third down upcoming. Many new faces in this Nichols secondary. Pig cage you heard moments ago. They have a freshman starting at corner today in Malik Woodery. We've talked about Jordan Jackson only being a sophomore. So a lot of youth back there on that back end for Tommy Rybaggy. Under four to go, first quarter. 13-0 lead for Nichols, but Lincoln driving. Eighth play of the drive upcoming. Hicks the motion man. Cartwright over the middle. Dangerous pass is knocked away by Jordan Jackson. A converted corner to his safety position, and he was all over that one, fourth down. Well, there's going to be a flag, and Nichols will refuse it, and it'll end up being fourth down as... It looked like uh, Tory Hicks. Legal motion, number four on the offense, moving upfield at the snap. Five yards, replay, third down. Yeah, they got they, they had the wrong guy. They had Robinson. It was actually Tory Hicks, number five, that was uh, moving towards the line of scrimmage when he went in motion as opposed to staying flat down the line. Yeah, so Nichols will decline the penalty, as you mentioned. Correction, that penalty is declined. Fourth down. There was some confusion about that initially, and Tim Rebo is saying, no, we want that decline. So you're sort of in no man's land here in the cold weather, and what are you looking at, a 45-plus yard field goal from here? So they'll go for it on fourth down and 12. Cartwright pressure coming. He's hit. Ball is out. And they're going to wave it incomplete. Taj Brown will fall on top of it. Just a huge hit coming off the edge from Nichols. And well, let's see this one again. Well, it was a situation where when, as soon as Cartwright dropped back to pass, he needed to get rid of it immediately. Didn't see the pressure coming from behind. And it was close to being a fumble. It was ruled incomplete by, by Bourgeois, Ed Bourgeois, the veteran official. But... That was a fantastic play by the Colonel defense. So Lindsey Scott and the offense back to work. They give this time to John Carrington. He comes in as the backup right now to Julian Gums, a guy who had a little experience last year. Short gain on first down and nine carries for 29 a season ago as a freshman. He's out of San Antonio. Tim Rebo likes the steadiness that he gives this team in the backfield. Well, giving them an opportunity to carry the football, 5'9", 185-pound sophomore. There's so many options for the Colonels. They've got to try to give everybody a little taste every once in a while to keep them happy. On second and six, there's another one of those weapons, Tevin Bush, but a good open field hit made by Aeneas Tibbs, freshman out of St. Louis, one of their corners, and it'll bring up a third down. A couple of Nichols' newer receivers are on the field as well now. See Aaron McKenney, senior out of St. James, who only played one game last year due to a knee injury against Kansas State in the opener. Tevin Bush on as well. Also Devontae Wap Jason, play. the Mississippi State dead. transfer. And, and the flag is down. All side. Contact. Number 52. Five yards, first down. That goes on Ahmad Bates, junior out of Carothersville, Miss, Carothersville, Missouri. Yeah, Lincoln was trying to bring the blitz up the middle and a uh, nice hard count by Scott, able to draw off the Blue Tigers. Approaching two to play, first quarter. Nichols up 13-0, looking for more. Scott airs it out, Tevin Bush, Ooh. and just out of his reach. You can see the speed on full display. Already a 20-yard touchdown run today, and it's second and 10. Boy, Bush does have speed. This ball from uh, Scott needed to have just a little bit more air underneath it. He threw it 
too much on a line, but that's a play, though, maybe go back to because Tevin Bush split three defenders and uh, turned on the Jets, but he just couldn't catch up to it. A rare incompletion for Lindsey Scott. He's six for eight. On second down, it's a keeper. There's some of the elusiveness we were talking about. He's up near midfield on a gain of about six or seven, so a more manageable third down upcoming. You see Scott fakes the handoff, shows some nice vision, quick feet, a couple little hop moves up in the hole and able to pick up a nice gainer on second down. Tim Rebo talking to us about how the perception for him is that he's a running quarterback first, but that's not the case. We've seen the way that he no. can throw the ball. He can certainly sling it. Here's a third down and four. Against the four-man rush, Gums with a nice hit Great in the tackle. open field. Terrific play. Charles Robertson, the freshman middle linebacker out of Houston. He's someone Malik Hoskins has been raving about. Thinks he could be a special player down the road. Uh, that was a special play, that's for sure. He's only 5'9", 185 pounds, but he flew to the football and then uh, threw himself in there with and took out a heck of a player in Gums before he could get uh, his feet on the ground and make a move. So on fourth down and two, Nichols will elect a punt. Nice job by this Lincoln defense. And Craig Walker, who we've already seen boot a couple touchbacks, now punts. Torrey Hicks awaits. And he'll call for a fair catch right around the 15-yard line. So they'll call it the 16. And that's where Lincoln will take over on their next offensive drive. Moved the ball pretty well last time down the field. Got the running game going. Couple of breakout runs from Franklin. The short passing game. What did you see from them in that series where they were more effective? Yeah, you know, just uh, in space, uh, you know, they've, they're trying to spread out the Colonels a little bit left to right, see if they can hit a few gappers. You know, the Lincoln's got some speed. They just lack the size up front, and that's going to be the issue. Can they hold off the defensive line and the, and the physicality of the Colonels between the hashes? The numbers on Hosea Franklin, and we talked about what he did last year, single-season rushing record in the MIAA. First down from the 16. This is Franklin. Big hole. Has some room on the edge again. And he has 11 more and a first down. Now let's see where they spot him out of bounds, actually. He might have. Yeah, they might have called it just short, actually, of a first down they did. Well, they figured out a little something with Hosea uh, Franklin. He's got tremendous speed to the corners, and if they can just get a Get, a, get an edge block, uh, they, they can make something happen on offense. That jet sweep again to Hicks. Nichols all over it. Kevin Moore all over it. And he drives him down. Maybe a loss of a yard or so, if not no gain, and it's third down. Now the Colonel's doing a really good job against that jet sweep. They're not getting fooled at all. They're getting pressure up the field. Not only just one defender, but it seems like two or three are crossing that line of scrimmage. And so in order to combat that, the uh, the Blue Tigers the are going to have to fake it quarter. or keep it a little bit. Keep and run a quarterback the, draw. Yeah. End of the first quarter here in Thibodeau. 13-0 lead for Nichols.
This is our brave new world, our new normal. Work as we know it may have powered down, but we're here to keep business on. On to turn your home office into a powerhouse. On to keep your virtual team connected. On to jumpstart your e-commerce engine. On hey, to make you unstoppable. This is the one thing we can do for you, connecting you to work every day. Etel is on for business. Back in Thibodeau, Jack Benjamin, Ronnie Rance with you. Start of the second quarter, 13-0 lead for Nichols on Lincoln University of Missouri. Low snap to Josh Cartwright. And Hosea Franklin, not much doing there on third down. The Nichols defense comes up strong again. He's about a yard shy, fourth down, and punting, punting unit will be outcoming for Lincoln. Now the Colonels defensively that time got back on track and just kind of, uh, after a good gainer on first down, just put the clamps on the on Lincoln. Clayton Winkler setting up for another punt for Lincoln with K.J. Franklin deep at his own 40 for Nichols. A low kick that... Oh my. He's not going to do much good for Lincoln. That one looked like they, they tried a little uh, squib kick. You know, they, they were kind of that uh, soccer style where you run to the right and kind of scrum it down the field, but it slipped, slid off the right side of the uh, punter's foot and went straight out of bounds. So the Nichols offense back to work, leading 13-0. Again, their season opener kicking off this FCS spring season. They'll open up Southland play in the six-game Southland Conference season here against Lamar next Saturday. A couple touchdown runs in that first quarter from Lindsey Scott and Tevin Bush. Scott back to work, handing off to his junior running back, Julian Gums, who's got five yards to the 40. Scott in that first quarter, his first quarter as a Colonel Ronnie, seven for nine, 68 yards, and also that 19, 13-yard uh, touchdown run. Yeah, nice, impressive way to kind of get um, his feet wet and to kind of get the emotions under control, and now the Colonels can, the bigger, stronger offensive line can kind of take over. Fake it to Gums. This is Dixon breaking a tackle. And another first down. He's been active. That's already his fourth catch. He's up over 50 yards now. We mentioned it last year. He went over 1,000 yards in only nine games played. He's a preseason All-American by Athlon Sports. 34th game today with a reception in his career. And a guy who's that big and that elusive, not a whole lot you can do in, in the secondary. He's a man amongst boys at that at this level. Scott fakes the pitch. He's looking over the middle for Bush, and he's got him. <laughs> Lindsey Scott's first career touchdown pass is a colonel. Tevin Bush's second score today. And it's 19-0 early in the second quarter. Uh, Scott faked the handoff and then stepped up in the pocket and then threaded the needle between two defenders to hit Bush right between the eyes. He hit that 5-7 speedy receiver who's already now got two touchdowns in the game, one rushing and one uh, receiving. The West Virginia transfer putting on a show here early. Extra point for Gavin Lassane is up and good, so he's two for three today. Uh, that was a laser beam from Scott. Yeah, those that think Lindsey Scott is simply a running quarterback are mis misinformed. You don't, you don't, you don't play for two SEC programs, LSU and Missouri, if you can just be a one-dimensional quarterback. He's a talented player. He's found a home here uh, five years after leading uh, Nick, uh, Zachary to a state championship. Here he is, the leader of this program, and you can see he's uber talented. 
You know, Tim Rebo made a great point talking to us, Ronnie, asking about Lindsey Scott. And is he the kind of guy to replace someone like Chase Forkade because he's been at an LSU, he's been in a Missouri? And he said, no, absolutely not. He had to come in here and earn it like everybody else. He immediately stepped on, sat for a year behind Chase Forkade, the best to ever do it at the quarterback spot at Nichols, learned, got better, became more respected as a leader. And you can see the way he's got command of this team in his first game as a colonel. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. I mean, he's 23 years old or something like that. You know, he's been around, been all over. He's led uh, led his junior college to a national championship. Quarterbacks are usually the leaders of your team, and he's a he's a guy that when you talk to David Brewerton, his head coach at Zachary, he's one of the best football coaches in the state of Louisiana. He raves about what Lindsey Scott meant to that program. Led Zachary to their first state title back in 2015. David Brewerton's added two more since. That program's become a powerhouse. Here's a bobbled snap. It's bobbled off the kickoff. Lincoln with all kinds of trouble. Looks like Nichols hopped on it, and they did. On special teams, Marquise Albert comes up with the football. The field is that the kick was touched by the receivers and recovered by the kicking team. First down, Nichols. How about Marquise Albert hopping on it? The redshirt freshman from New Orleans who comes over after after a year at Idaho, and Nichols has the ball right back. A disaster for Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln was a little too casual. You know, you got to realize that, hey, that ball's live, you know, in the kickoff. And uh, sometimes, it, you know, you got it, I'll take it. And there was a little miscommunication, not a sense of urgency, and the Colonels hopped on it. Nichols brings in Cohen Grenier now at quarterback. Served as Chase Forcade's backup over the last couple of years. Redshirt junior from Destrahan led them to a 2014 state title at the 5A level. Only six passes last year, completed three. Fakes the handoff, looking to the end zone. Oh, it was tipped off the body of the corner and caught by Dantes Costley. There's a flag down as well, likely for interference. That's just a wild play off the body of Elliot Albert, the corner. Curious to see if they throw this, call this an offense or defense because they were both locked up. Pass interference, number 29 on the defensive team. Okay. A penalty decline, result of the play is a touchdown. What a wild one here, Ronnie. We take another look. Off the body of Albert, caught by Costley. First career touchdowns for both Grenier passing and then Costley receiving. Yeah, Costley was getting very physical out on the edge with a defender for Lincoln and uh, just kind of Johnny on the spot. There's another missed extra point for Lassane. Nails it off that left upright. No, he's missed a couple today. Yeah, that's the only, uh, that's been the only blemish so far tonight for the Colonels are the two two missed extra points. Costley, by the way, mentioned his first career touchdown. Actually, his second had a 41-yard catch as a redshirt sophomore. Uh, actually, yeah, redshirt sophomore back in uh, 2018. Got to go back to September 2018. So he's into the scoring column. Our scoring drive summary, by the way, brought to you by Parish Wealth Partners. It was a quick one. One play, 17 yards. Just how Rob Christoffel drew it up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want you to get lock up with a defender in the end zone. We're going to throw it off your hands and then look for the deflection. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. If you're Lincoln, you kind of thinking defensively you're in a good spot and, and it didn't work out for you. Got to be a thrill, though, for Grenier, right? Comes off the bench, first play, first throw, six. First career touchdown. He, he turns, he looks over at his teammate, Lindsey Scott, and says, what's the big deal? This stuff's easy. <laughs> Especially when you get that kind of bounce. So Nichols off and running. 26 nothing, under 13 to go in this first half. And Torrey Hicks will wave for a fair catch for Lincoln. And they'll uh, bring it out again. So we've seen Nichols offensively and all the firepower that they have. We've seen what they can do defensively. And... You know, you start thinking catch, about Lincoln first down at the 25-yard line. You start thinking about the, the weapons on this team, the way that the pieces are going to come together. You know, we've talked about how many mouths to feed there are on the offensive side of the ball, Ronnie. I think we're seeing a little bit of that defensively too. Tim Marebo and Tommy Rombacki are going to have some questions about who's going to play where because there's a lot of guys who will be in the running for playing time. 
you know, when you carry 109 guys on your roster, that's a that's a bunch, and and they're, most of them are from Louisiana, which means they can play. I mean, Louisiana is one of the better high school football uh, states in the country. Jose Franklin across the 25. And then the other thing, too, is they've kind of created a culture where some of the top transfers want to come, you know, from some of the Power Five conferences. You get a handful of those, you know, on your roster combined with good recruiting, which Tim Rebo and his staff do a great job of. It creates a tremendous competition, uh, and that's exactly what you want for your program. You mentioned the transfers, 11 from the Division I level alone coming in for this year. So they have done a great job. The pipeline in Louisiana bringing in talent. Josh Cartwright to throw. There's Franklin in the flat. And again, Kevin Moore is just all over the field. He's fun to watch. Number seven in red, Moore just flies around the field. He plays that strong safety position. Kind of the old school approach, right? Like a missile out there where he just throws his body into the tacklers. He's already got four tackles today. Senior in of Lafayette, again, two years at Texas Tech. First team Southland Conference selection in 2019, his first year as a colonel. All Louisiana, second team. And you're talking about being all Louisiana in a year where LSU won a national title. Under 12 to go, first half. All kinds of movement on the offensive line. And this is going to back link it up a few more. False start. Number 77 on the offensive team. Five yards replay, third down. You really can't talk about it enough. The lack of reps that all teams playing in this spring have had, not having. You lose the fall camp, you lose spring ball, but... A team like Lincoln, too, dealing with the weather that they've had, their conference in the Division II level in the MIAA not playing, and they've been, the last three weeks, Malik Hoskins was telling us, they've been at a gym adjacent to campus just trying to do whatever they can, running through their formations. Only so much you can do. Here's Cartwright throwing. And that's too far out of the reach of Enrico Gilliam. Nice coverage from Jarius Monroe, who is a guy last year who was a field corner and they can move him around to the boundary as well. He's someone who has to step up with the departure of Darren Evans, who you probably remember played at LSU this past fall. Yeah, Monroe did a great job defensively right there, not allowing anything. And, you know, getting back to Lincoln, having to practice in a gym. This is, I mean, we're starting their football season at, in February. You, you start a football season in September. So normally your preseason warm-ups are taking place in the heat of the summer, not the, the middle of the winter. So it's, it's completely a, a different feel. Oh, this oh punt is another oh tough no. one off the leg of Winkler. Oh. I mean, we, we, get, we got to try somebody else if that's the best we can do. That's two in a row for Lincoln where they just – their punter almost missed the football, like just straight almost swung and missed. And uh, I think you got to try somebody else if that's the best you can do. Tim Rebo's probably hoping that, too. He wants to see what he has offensively. Right. You only have to go 27 yards in one play. How much can you see? Cohen Grani is back out there for a second series for Nichols. 10.51 to go in this opening half. It's a 26-0 lead for the Colonels. Two-time defending Southland Conference champions against Division II Lincoln playing a three-game spring schedule. John Carrington is drilled in the backfield. All right, I'll tell you what. Teandre Skinner, the junior of Grandview, Missouri, got there in a hurry. He was their fifth leading tackler a year ago. And that's a loss of a yard. There are some playmakers on this defense. We've seen a couple guys who can fly around. Second down and 11. A pitch to Carrington, who's got some room. And John Carrington inside the 20. And into the Louisiana propane red zone. Where Daniel Wheeler, the defensive end for Lincoln, almost intercepted that toss. I mean, it was, it was, uh, a toss was within about a foot of his hand and going pick six the other way, but it turns out to be a big play for Nichols. Lincoln showing blitz. Granier throwing, Dejan Dixon 
turns to the end zone. And a couple of snowflakes in the end zone <laughs> from a couple of snow angels. Dejon Dixon, his first touchdown here in 2021. And a flag is down afterwards. That might be for the celebration. Yeah, it is. They got uh, Tim Rebo uh, going over there to tell Dixon he's not happy about that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, there's... Unsportsmanlike foul, number five. Dejan On the defensive team. That felt him to assessed on the kickoff. Dejan Dixon. Correction. Unsportsmanlike number five on the scoring team. Dejon Dixon is just, I mean, with that frame, 6'4", 200 pounds, and his speed and the way he's able to use his body and shield the defender from the ball, I mean, I, as long as you throw it in the numbers or, or anywhere up high, he is going to be a beast and have another 1,000-plus yard season this year. Last year for Dejon, he caught eight touchdowns in nine games played. Gunnar Jones now is on for the extra point after a couple misses from Gavin Lassane. And that one is put through by the senior from Rogersville, Alabama, who transferred in from North Alabama back in 2019. And Dixon just dragging def defenders into the end zone and then a little snow angel celebration because it's winter time in, uh, in Thibodeau. The only thing keeping Dixon from maybe having gaudier numbers is the fact that they have to share the football. they got so many great weapons on offense that they're going to give everybody some touches. Also the fact that they've started drives inside the 20-yard line. That's true. <laughs> There's a drive summary for you brought to you by Parish Wealth Partners. Three plays, 33 yards, and just over 60 seconds. And with... A little under 10 to go in this opening half. Nichols is clicking on all cylinders. Again, as expected against a, a Division II opponent, but Nichols fans getting a chance to see what they can be excited about this spring. A whole lot of offensive firepower on this team. Colonels going for their third Southland Conference championship in a row. Only seven of the 11 teams in the Southland Conference that play football are actually going to play this spring. Four elected not to participate. Ball just came off of the tee right there, a little wind or something. Just about the only thing holding Craig Walker from putting the ball into the end zone today off the tee. So eighth-ranked Nichols, a 33-0 lead on Lincoln University of Missouri. Just under 10 to go in this first half. Shorter kickoff this time from Craig Walker and Torrey Hicks with some room to run. Gets to about the 40-yard line where he's met by Sean Hall. Sophomore safety out of Watcher. Well, we were talking about the Southland Conference season and how it will play out. Only seven of 11 teams are participating this year. So you had four who already played in the fall. Six-game conference slate. Nichols looking for that three-peat, Ronnie. Only five teams in Southland history have done it. McNeese the last back in 2003. A three-bid year for the Southland back in 2019. You know, a storyline coming in here, the FCS playoffs shrinking from 24 to down to 16 teams. So you lose a game in Southland conference play, you're in danger of maybe not getting that at-large. There's only going to be five at-large spots. New quarterback on Desmond Hunter for Lincoln, and Torrey Hicks wasn't ready for it in the flat. Torrey Hicks was open. He needs to get his head around and, and, and anticipate the football. You see Sam Houston last FCF, uh, FCS playoff run was in 2017. Surprising. When I mean, you think about that, I didn't realize that that hadn't been in the playoffs. Yeah, the they last made, it, made a couple national title yeah, games. Hadn't been in the last couple of years. And then how about that crazy win uh, for McNeese a week ago, an overtime thriller. Uh, to start their season in, at home in Lake Charles. Yeah, crazy one against Tarleton. How about McNeese and getting that win off what they've dealt with, the pandemic, Hurricane Laura, Hurricane Delta, just remarkable what Frank Wilson and co. were able to accomplish. Hosea Franklin breaks a couple tackles, and the ball comes loose at the end, and it's scooped up. This is Del Riub taking it to the house for a scoop and score.
And a bad news for, for the Blue Tigers. I think Franklin is down. He's their 1,300-yard rusher. Let's see this again from the redshirt sophomore from Destrahan. Eight games in 2019 as a redshirt freshman, mostly special teams. Ruling on the field is a fumble. Recovered by Nick for a touchdown. And he comes up with that play. And, yeah, you're right on Franklin. the lead for Nichols. We're back in 60 seconds to Thibodeau. Hey, Colonel fans. This is Jonathan J.T. Terrell, director of athletics. That's terrible. I just want to talk to you for a second about how you you can be a part of helping out our student athletes here at Nichols. Joining the Colonel Athletic Association, the CAA, is one way that you'll be able to help out our scholarship be able to help out um, giving our student athletes an opportunity to have a D1 experience here at Nichols. Um, people ask all the time, which way, what do you need, how can I help? The one way you can help is by joining the Colonel Athletic Association at Phoenix Fund. It helps out just more than our football team. It helps out every student athlete here on our campus. So join the CAA by going to GoColonels.com. The way we go to work every day has changed. Work powered down, but we powered on. On to turn your home office into a powerhouse. On to keep your virtual team connected every day. Etel is on for business. So the extra point. You saw the uh, attempt there from Gunnar Jones. Before that break, we were talking about Hosea Franklin being banged up for Lincoln. We certainly hope he's all right. One of the uh, one of the premier backs in the Division II level with what he was able to accomplish back in 2019. That extra point, again, was uh, no good. Three misses today on extra points now for Nichols. So just about the only thing that has gone wrong for this team. That'll open up the competition, kicking competition. Have you m- missing three extra points? I... I- you know, that'll uh, that'll be a point of contention. It's something to talk about and work on in practice. As if Tim Rebo doesn't already have enough of those, even with what's going on yeah. here with the 39 nothing lead. Craig Walker, who's got three touchbacks already today, will send it away. Tori Hicks and Christian Robinson are deep. And Hicks a chance to bring it out from around the five. Oh, a nice play made there. Ankle tackle by Zane McCrary, redshirt freshman out of Lutcher. And Tim Rebo's talked about it with how deep this secondary is, Ronnie, and how deep the running back core is. He's going to get a couple of these guys out there on special teams. You make plays there, that's where you start seeing some more action on offense and defense. A lot of great athletes uh, from South Louisiana that can all run and get, be physical. And then so yeah, that's that's you want to get coaches' attention. Hey, run down there on kickoffs and, uh, and and make a play. And that was there were a couple of colonels down there that could have made the play, but turned out to be a Franklin was the beneficiary. So let's see if Lincoln can get get something going here. Nine eighteen to go in the opening half, and another penalty flag is down. And we have a Delay quarter. The game. Number 17 on the offense. New quarterback. Five yards. Replay first down. Yeah, Desmond Hunter was out there last series. Now he's back out of the fields. So the lead, 39-0 for Nichols. Eighth-ranked team in the FCS in this spring season. 9-18 to go. First, first half, Jack Benjamin and Ronnie Rance with you. Season opener for both teams. The run by Hicks and Pig Cage, another terrific tackle in space. He has been fun to watch here today. Freshman out of Kenner, the Rummel product, two-time New Orleans advocate, all-metro selection. He has all the talent in the world. Well, he's a player they're happy to get. A guy who was a three-star recruit you know, by some publications out of, out of high school in the Catholic League, and he is just making a name for himself in, the, in this first half. Desmond Hunter to throw on second down. And a nice catch made by Krishan Robinson. 
Picks up a couple of yards. Hunter again, a senior from Woodville, Mississippi. He comes over from Northeast Mississippi Community College. This is his third stop. He started his career at Heinz Community College. Last year, well, back in 2019, I should say, played eight games, only a 44% passing clip, a touchdown and two interceptions. But talking with Malik Hoskins, he's got a good arm, knows the offense. See what he can do here on third down and nine. And we've got another stoppage. I think it might be something with the clock. Previous play is under further review. Okay, interesting. I'm wondering if they're, they, they, they feel like he didn't catch it. I'm not quite sure. I'll say this for, for Lincoln, uh, Jack. This has been a costly first half. Not only do they find themselves down 39 to nothing on the scoreboard, but you don't have your starting quarterback, Josh Cartwright. He's out, and you don't have Franklin as well, who's out with an injury. So, Okay, so they're taking a look at the targeting possible targeting call on uh, on one of the colonels. Yeah, looking at Malik Woodery. Freshman from New Orleans who had that uh, hit after the catch. These are always so tough to tell and I'm not a big fan of the targeting rules, to be honest with you, uh, other than if it is 100% obvious that a player does something inappropriate or, you know, that, that one looks like to me like it was a hit from the shoulder. After I don't, further review, there was no targeting on the play. Third down. I mean, unless a guy is on the ground and somebody kicks him or somebody spears him or something just obviously blatant, I, I don't, I don't think – you should have targeting in, in, the, in football. I mean, how can a guy at full speed running 20 miles an hour in a split second make a decision, you know, where the target spot is? Sometimes you just can't make an adjustment. So third down and nine here for Desmond Hunter and Lincoln. That's and a bad snap. And let's see if Hunter did indeed fall on it. He did. Otherwise, that is even more of a disaster at the 10-yard line. So from bad to worse here for Lincoln. and yeah, Over under 10 on this punt here. Uh, over under be 10 yards on the punt. It's been it's been bad the last couple of punts. We'll see like how. It's not like you can practice punting in an indoor gym. So, you know, I'm yeah, given that. This <laughs> is true. I mean, uh, let's, let's that, cut him a little slack here. I mean, the net is uh, is, is tough. See if Clayton Winkler can get his leg into this one a little bit. K.J. Franklin waiting. Well, there's a line drive. K.J. Franklin. Oh, nice hit on special teams made. He's dropped to the turf very quickly by Jalen Mosley, one of the starting linebackers. That was actually one of the better plays of the first half for Lincoln. They got a good punt, good coverage down there, and a nice tackle. So 7 4 to go in this first half. Jack Benjamin, Ronnie Rantz with you. Season, open, season opener for Nichols. The two-time defending Southland Conference champions have appeared in three straight FCS playoffs. Trying to do so again in this unprecedented 2021 spring season. Lindsey Scott back in at quarterback. And Julian Gums the back. He's across midfield. Short gain. Three-yard pickup, second down and seven upcoming. Lindsey Scott today is 9 for 11, 108 yards and a touchdown and a rushing score in his debut as the Colonel quarterback. Again, Nichols replacing Chase Forkade, who started all but one game in his four years as a Colonel, played in every game. Now pitching out this time, this is Gums. And pushed out of bounds by Daniel Wheeler. Pretty wild first half for the Colonels, right? They're in total control. And how about the fact that Lindsey Scott's played very well, has one touchdown passing. The backup, Grania, has two touchdown passing. So he's actually thrown more touchdown passes than Lindsey Scott has. Hey, Grania, two passes, two scores. Third down and one. 
Gums waiting patiently. And he just keeps on moving. He is just such a bruiser. Takes it inside the 30-yard line. A flag comes in late as well. Let's see how this one goes on. And you saw on full display from Gums the patience he has as a runner. Personal foul, number 64 on the defense, 15 yards, automatic. That's Calvin Black. Personal foul, number 64 on the offensive team, 15 yards, replay third down. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say it seemed like it would be on the offense, not the defense. So that will back Nichols up a little bit. Well, Julian Gums talking about the sensational sophomore season he had. First team all Southland Conference, second team all Louisiana, single season records for rushing and touchdowns. And, and Tim Rebo thinks he's only scratching the surface of what he can do. Well, he was a great player from the New Orleans area. Went to De La Salle High School, an outstanding program, coached by Ryan Manali, who's now the new head coach at Jesuit in New Orleans. And he likes to run the football. Lindsey Scott. Well handled that time by the Lincoln defense, Vontavius Thacker, their leading tackler from a couple years ago, junior from Memphis on the stop. I don't know that I, Lindsey Scott, I don't know if he had a read there or it was predetermined, but if he hands that ball off to Gums, he's probably in the end zone, and that time he kept it and only gained a minimal yardage. We're going to get a measurement here. You've got the nose of the ball at the 42, so see how this works out. Lindsey Scott has been terrific through the air. We've talked about his accuracy. Just his second carry there, actually his third carry there moments ago. The suspense on the extension of the chain gang, and it is inches short. I don't even know if you can call that inches rather than an inch. Yeah, really, really close. Imagine we'll have a little, well, it is third down. They could run a full play. They don't have to necessarily go to a quarterback sneak here. Colonel's not attempted a fourth down play yet today. Last year they were tremendous, 9 for 20 on fourth down conversions, 45% clip. I should actually say that number isn't nearly as good as I thought it was a second ago. You would think on a lot of those fourth downs when it's a yard or two, you'd be higher. The officials are still discussing something. With 5.49 to play in this opening half. Nichols trying to win a season opener for the third time in their last four seasons. Up 39-0. Trying to convert here on fourth and inches. Julian Gums has the first down easily. And a little bit more, too. Julian Gums just runs so violently. You know, he's... Five foot ten and listed at 230 pounds, just a bowling ball, but he's got speed as well. You see, even with contact, he picks up about four or five yards after the initial contact. Tim Reba and Rob Christoffel have talked about how he loves to be in that meeting room with the offensive line, figure out mm -hmm. their tendencies. Here he is again. And brought down near the 30 yard line. Yeah, that's actually really smart on his part that he would spend time watching film with the offensive line, maybe listen to the coaches coach up that offensive line because you got certain guys that block different ways, and he's able to know and learn, you know, this guy likes to turn players to the right or, or however and makes him a better runner. Lindsey Scott gets around a few tacklers. Elusiveness on full display, finally brought down by Clayton Winkler, who we've talked about as the punter. He's also one of the safeties on the defense. And I think we could say he's had a better day defensively than on his punting. So 
So third and short upcoming here for Nichols. Have not had to face many third downs here today. They're just one for three. On third and one, Lindsey Scott has the first down and a little more reaches inside the 20, and that means Nichols is back into the Louisiana propane red zone. A nice job right there by Scott. Faked the toss to the right and then a little trap play back to the left. And, you know, he doesn't run the ball like a quarterback. He runs the ball sometimes like a true running back. He can be physical as well. So Nichols inside the red zone again. We approach three to go in this first half. Lindsey Scott on the keeper. And rolls toward about the 10-yard line. That offensive line doing a terrific job here today, clearing out holes. We've talked about it. Four starters back on this line, including P.J. Burkhalter, senior from Franklinton. He's started all 40 games now in his career, has never missed a game. He's an All-American, five preseason All-American honors. Picked up five in 2019. Julian Gums waiting patiently, and it's first and goal now for Nichols. Yeah, Burkhalter, six foot three, 330 pounds senior. That used to be 6'3", 330, used to be a left tackle. Nowadays, that's just an interior. That's a center. That's a guard. It's crazy how the people, uh, the sizes have gone up over the last 15, 20 years. First and goal for Nichols. Gums the back with Lindsey Scott. It is Gums. Still pushing. And reaches down to about the one. So for this game, Ronnie, I think we can call this a methodical drive compared to what Nichols has done offensively today. Well, I think the Colonels, too. I mean, it's also you're eating up clock and moving the game along. I mean, Tim Rebo knows, look, they could probably sling it around and name their score. This way they can... Uh, Second and goal, Julian Gums into the end zone. And another score for the Colonels. They're over 40 now in the first half, a 45 spot. The Colonels just imposed their will on that drive. That was the Gums show along with that big offensive line, as you mentioned, Bartholomew, Burkhalter, Roussel, Hill, Joseph, all doing a great job up front. 12 plays, actually 11 plays, 52 yards. Gavin Lassane back out there to kick. And that one is through. Another look at the touchdown run by Julian Gums, his first of 2021. Nothing surprising about that touchdown run. It's like most of them, between the tackles, power physical, and just running over defensive, defensive players. Our Parish Wealth Partners drive summary, 11 plays, 52 yards, capped by the one-yard Julian Gums touchdown run. And a 46-0 first-half lead here for Nichols with 2.05 to play. Yeah, we were talking about Gums and his propensity to meet with the linemen and be in those meeting rooms and, and talk with the offensive line coach. It's really a credit to a lot of the guys on the team, the, like many will, but the extra time put in by so many of these players during a period like this. For instance, Lindsey Scott, Cohen Grenier, constantly after practice, Tim Rebo telling us about the extra reps they had to get because you got to try to make up for lost time. I think that's such a huge piece of this too, especially dealing with this COVID-19 season where you're not practicing as much as you normally would. Yeah, there's the assumption that these guys have been doing nothing but practicing since last summer, but that has not been the case because of all the stops and starts and, you know, holidays and, and COVID issues. and So it hasn't been just six months of scrimmaging and practicing, but – they have had some extra time. Brad to take advantage. First down at 25-yard line. 
they have taken advantage of it. And, and for Lindsey Scott, they feel like that extra time has been really good uh, to get things done in the classroom uh, as the leader of their offense. That's a great point. He had a chance to get up to speed, learn the playbook. He would just sit there constantly and diagram things. You know, Robin Fambra does a, just a great job for the advocate, had a great story on, on Lindsey and uh, his younger brother. We talked about Logan also being on the team and basically how he spent his time after transferring over to Nichols. Here is Desmond Hunter and passing the flat for about three. That goes to C.J. Closser, redshirt junior from Jefferson City, but you know, Lindsey Scott, Robin Fambra was writing about how Lindsey was, you know, he'd sit in his room or just, just looking at film, diagramming plays, talking with the coaches, and, and doing any learning he can. Of course, nothing can simulate being out of the field, and you know, Tim Rebo and Rob Christofel, I think, knew what kind of a guy they had, but they said, look, the bullets have to be firing for us to really know, and we've gotten our first look here tonight. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the Colonel's offensive staff's got to be happy with what they've seen from from Scott and Grenier, for that matter, through two touchdowns and two passing attempts. And they've done everything they wanted on offense. They've shown the physicality on the offensive side. We knew about uh, – Dejon Dixon and how good he was, and he's lived up to that. Tevin Bush has shown the transfer from West Virginia has shown that burst and that speed that uh, that that is special at this FCS level. Speaking of burst and speed, we've seen that from this Nichols defense. Jarius Monroe on that last stop. Here's a third down and eight now for Lincoln. Under 90 seconds now in this first half. Desmond Hunter pressure coming, and he's drilled, and looks like that ball came out as well. I think Lincoln hopped on it. Boy, they sent the house. Perry Gancy and Co. leading the way. Elijah Reams in there as well. And it's fourth down upcoming. Now pressure came right in his face. And, you know, when you drop back and you see the blitz, you probably have to just let it fly. Instead, he tried to, to pull it down and, and was sacked. And lucky he didn't, uh, didn't turn it over. So I think Lincoln will run this play clock down as far as they can. Winkler to punt, and this is his best of the day by far. Will roll out of bounds at the 35. So 27 seconds to go. You figure for this offense, that's plenty of time. Yeah, I think the Colonels will probably just uh, kneel on it. They could have called timeouts on that last series to try to stop the clock, and Tim Rebo elected to show good sportsmanship and not call a timeout. So I would assume that they're going to take it to the house. And I could assume wrong. <laughs> Must they hand it <laughs> off right No, I, th I think I was half kidding by bringing up plenty of time for 27 <laughs> seconds. But, hey, you never know. Tim Rebo and Rob Christoffel have surprised me before. We'll see. 27 seconds. And not much doing there on that run by Carrington. Now it looks like Nichols will... Now we'll wait for this clock to run down, but looks like they'll be content to run that clock down and go to the locker room with a 46 to nothing lead. Well, somebody called a timeout. No, nope, they didn't. Okay, I thought that was the first half. Yeah, waved it off. So that is the end of the first half. 46 nothing for Nichols. 124 rush yards, 108 pa well, actually 143 passing yards. Very balanced across the board. And a big lead in their opener. Stick around for our halftime recap for more from our presenting sponsors, Etel Business, who is digging in and uh, doing all kinds of great things around the community. This is our brave new world, our new normal. Work as we know it may have powered down, but we're here to keep business on. On to turn your home office into a powerhouse. On to keep your virtual team connected. On to jumpstart your e-commerce engine. On hey. to make you unstoppable. <laughs> this is the one thing we can do for you, connecting you to work every day. Etel is on for business.
At Etel Business, we know that small businesses power our local communities. And while COVID-19 struck a heavy blow to small businesses throughout Louisiana, the effects have proven more than financial, but have struck a deeply emotional chord. Across the state, businesses are in survival mode, but this current increase in grit is not something new to Louisiana natives. Digging in, treading water, and gaining ground is a work ethic that in today's COVID recovery is beginning to reveal itself as a remarkably bold entrepreneurial spirit. Still, when faced with the enormous difficulty of surviving through the pandemic, businesses innovated and modified how they interacted with and served customers, transforming, adapting, and continuing to fight the good fight. Through the telling of these comeback stories, the Etel business team is proud and equally honored to focus our energies on the rebirth, regrowth, and revitalization of small businesses in our community. From online storefronts, super fast fiber internet, cloud storage, and the protection of network data, Etel Business can provide the guidance and tech support to help small businesses rebound and rebuild. We champion the belief that the right partners, technology, and tools can help small businesses evolve to meet and overcome the current challenges. Linking the parishes of Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Iberville, Lafourche, Livingston, St. James, St. John the Baptist, Terrebonne, West Baton Rouge, and parts of Jefferson, our locally led and growing network is lit up with over 2,700 miles of fiber and connects 60,000 South Louisiana customers. And we're here to support businesses as they pivot, revamp, and move forward. Contact one of the members of the Etel Business team directly, go to etelbusiness.com or call 866-635-4100. Together, let's start the conversation about how we can help you and our community turn business back on. Halftime in Thibodeau between Nichols and Lincoln University of Missouri. Jack Benjamin joined by Nichols Director of Athletics, Jonathan J.T. Terrell, who has steered the department through a time like no other. J.T., I know you love a challenge. I don't know that you expected necessarily this coming in, but what has this time been like for you, and how has the department dealt with everything going on around COVID-19? Yeah, so I can tell you, Jack, we've been very, very fortunate. I mean, in this time when people are sitting around thinking, man, how are we going to get through this? We, we pull it together. And um, with that, the simple fact of uh, we always talk about one team, one goal. And our goal was to make sure that our student athletes had the opportunity to be able to compete. And uh, the one way we were able to do that was, uh, you know, we've been, we've been blessed enough to have testing, um, 
uh, state has uh, sent in some testing and we've been able to test our student athletes. Uh, you know, every student athlete has a different uh, protocol to how based on what, uh, what they play. And so football has to be tested three times a week. Basketball has to be tested three times a week. So it has been uh, a tough road, but uh, man, we've been willing to, to take that fight just so our student athletes can compete. We talk about the changing times and the unprecedented period of time that we are in for football, much different moving from the fall to the spring. Can you take us through a little bit all the logistics behind shifting that season from fall to spring? Yeah, so I tell you, when we uh, made the decision, it was a tough decision. You know, you still had your student athletes here being able to play. Uh, they're practicing. They're thinking that we're about to start a season and to walk out to that field and be able, and, and sit down and tell them, hey, guys, when we're, we're not going to play. And uh, and not just football, but every sport that was in the fall that I had to tell that we weren't going to play. Um, the, the deal behind it was we didn't know enough. And when I say we didn't know enough, I had to we had to err on the fact of making sure that our student athletes were safe. And so the health and safe health safety and health came first. And so we made the move to as a as a uh, conference to move it to the spring. And I'm sure that people were thinking that's not so smart. And so you're going to pair it up with baseball and softball. And the one thing that I thought was now is the opportunity that we can watch. We can see what other people are doing, not make the mistakes that either they made or we have an opportunity to be able to move forward. And so we have been. Uh, we went and, you know, talked to some people. Um, you know, we have Brian Clawson that's here on campus and, you know, local doctors that we've talked to to make sure that we can do the things that we needed to to move forward. And the spring has been really um, once we learned what we learned in the fall of how to test, when to test, how to protect our student athletes, that's what we've been able to do. So it's been a transition, but not not one that we can't face. I can tell you some people who don't matter when football came, they just wanted it, which are all, all our fans who are so happy to be back at Gidry Stadium for the first time here tonight. JT, I know the game day experience is different this year. It has to be given capacity restrictions, everything going on around COVID-19. Can you talk through the game day experience a little bit, how game days will look a little different this yeah, year? So I can tell you for sure that, you know, our biggest deal was uh, we, we don't have a lot of staff when you're talking about everything that's going to happen on Friday. You know, we have a doubleheader softball, we have a baseball game, we have a soccer game, and we have football. So our biggest deal was to be able to make sure that the experience didn't change for uh, everybody that's coming to see. And so the biggest deal for us was to make sure that you can go online and get your tickets. We asked people to buy season tickets early. And um, the day before a game, is when we want people to come in and get their tickets because we won't have anybody in the ticket booths. And a big part of that is making sure that we protect our own people as well. You know, that we're tested as yourself to make sure that we're, you know, as much as we're around our student athletes. So the experience is gonna be, it, it, it won't be the same when you're talking about tailgating, right? This place loves to tailgate. I was an avid tailgater, so I know. I think my own wife is upset the fact that we can't tailgate. <laughs> but um, the fact that, um, that they're having the experience to be out in the sands and to be able to really, really cheer on our student athletes is what it's all about. And so, um, you know, we have about 2,700 people in the stands. Uh, that's, you know, the band, everybody is limited. Our cheerleaders um, will be in certain spots on the field and then our student athletes. So um, the experience will be a little bit different. Uh, we are, we are able to sell alcohol out, you know, and I know that's a big deal in Thibodeau that, you know, you'd be able to have that opportunity to do that in the stands and being outdoors and have to sit in your seat and all of that stuff. But, you know, asking people to make sure they wear their mask, to social distance, although it's not the best and it's not what we're no normally, what we're used to. I mean, we should be by now, it's almost a year. But the fact that we're just trying, we're trying to get through a season. And I want everybody that's in the stands to be able to understand that we're doing this for our student athletes, as well as for them, for the safety of everybody here. Well, that's Nichols Director of Athletics, Jonathan J.T. Terrell, the 10th AD in Nichols history, the first black athletic director as well. We are uh, so happy to have you here. I appreciate all the work that you're doing. And uh, hey, all the best to you. And hopefully the football team can get off to a great start this year. No doubt. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate all right. it. We'll come back with halftime highlights and stats around the corner, Nichols and Lincoln University of Missouri.
Touchdown, Nichols! The Colonels have conquered the Southland again! This is our brave new world, our new normal. The way we go to work every day has changed, and the power of connection has never mattered more. But we're here to keep business on, on to turn your home office into a powerhouse, on to make that meeting without going anywhere. On to plan your epic power launch. On to jumpstart your e-commerce engine. On to revel in the little things. On to make you unstoppable. This is the one thing we can do for you, and that's connecting you to work every day. Etel is on for business. This is our brave new world, our new normal. 
Work as we know it may have powered down, but we're here to keep business on. On to turn your home office into a powerhouse. On to keep your virtual team connected. On to jumpstart your e-commerce engine. On to make you unstoppable. This is the one thing we can do for you, connecting you to work every day. Etel is on for business. Back in Thibodeau getting set for the second half between Nichols and Lincoln University of Missouri. The Colonels up 46-0, a dynamic first half on both sides of the ball. Jack Benjamin and Ronnie Rance with you. We've seen a lot of different contributors, Ronnie, and just a little bit of a preview of what's to come this spring for the Colonels. Well, what's to come is you better make sure you have a program or a or a depth chart because you're going to see a lot of different people touch the football for Nichols. They're not just one or two players. They have six, seven offensive players that can score any place on the field, and they've got a defense that flies to the football. Nichols kicking off this spring campaign against Division II Lincoln. We were discussing this earlier, but six or seven opponents went by the wayside for the Colonels. They don't play week one of the Southland schedule. Of course, both Southland games that were due to play tomorrow got canceled. So uh, here are the Colonels, and off a nice return here. That is one of the backup tight ends, Lee Negrato, who's going to see some time this year. Talented freshman from Pass Christian, Mississippi. On a nice kickoff return. So you figure they'll keep running their offensive weapons out there. Got to see what you have. First drive, so uh, first drive of this third quarter for the Colonels. Eighth-ranked team in the country. That's by the Athlon Sports Poll. Again, Jack Benjamin, Ronnie Rance with you. Lindsey Scott back to work. He was 9 for 11 through the air for a touchdown and ran for a touchdown in the first half. And he starts with John Carrington alongside him in the backfield. Short game there. Nice job of the Lincoln linebacking court. You mentioned the Athlon Sports Poll. You're probably too young to remember the Athlon Sports Magazine. Like, that used to be... Now it's online, but that used to I, be the, the thing, man. When every summer you'd go run to the store to try to get that Athlon Sports Catalog magazine to see where your team was. So that's pretty cool that the Colonels are, are ranked in the high like that. Second out of nine, Scott wings it. This is Carrington, and this is what he can do. He can run it. He can catch it. And he's got a first down and a big gain for Nichols across midfield and into Lincoln territory right away to start this third quarter. Nice play by Carrington. He goes 5'9", about 185 pounds. And as you can tell, the sophomore out of Texas, a 
a versatile running back. Can catch the ball and showed some nice movement in the open field. Sophomore out of San Antonio. Again, last year just nine carries. He'll be much more involved this year as the number two to Julian Gums. First set of downs. Scott for K.J. Franklin. And he has a nice pickup of about seven yards. You know, Franklin's kind of become the forgotten guy here tonight with how many weapons Nichols has had and what Tevin Bush has done in this slot. But he is a very talented player. Tim Rebo has just raved about his work ethic to us. Always working after practice. Such a great slot receiver. As only a sophomore out of Prairieville. Yeah, Franklin from uh, went to Santa Ma High School over in Ascension Parish and plays that slot really well. Here he is in the open field. And running. he can run it. Here he is turning the corner. And enough for a big first down gain. Finally pushed out of bounds by Jalen Mosley, sophomore out of Kansas City, and the Colonels continuing to chew up some chunk plays and moving the chains. Franklin with a nice run, also a nice block downfield by one of his uh, one of his teammates. That was David Mosley, the tight end, got a really nice seal block there. And yeah, Mosley, a guy that coaching staff's very high on as well. Three starts last year at guard, moves over to tight end this year. Scott throwing. There's Dantes costly breaking free. And six more for Nichols. They keep on keeping on in this third quarter. Yeah, costly got a free release, ran a nice slant route, and Lindsey Scott put it right on the money. Dantes put his foot in the ground and made the safety miss and then went untouched into the end zone. Junior from Vachery, St. James Products. Mentioned he did not play last year as a redshirt sophomore, as a redshirt freshman, had one touchdown catch. Another missed extra point. This has become an ongoing storyline for Nichols. That time it's Gavin Lassane misfiring again. That's the third one he's missed. Make it the fourth. Well, fourth one is a team, third for him personally. Yeah, that's um, that's interesting right there. Talking about that that play by Costly, Tim Rebo talks about how you know he's got the speed that can take over a game. You know, when he when he says you know he can take the top off of a defense, meaning he can turn on those afterburners, and now all of a sudden that secondary has to worry about him run with him down the field. It opens up everything underneath. Might be an understatement to say that Lindsey Scott and Cohen Grania have a lot of toys to play with this year. Many weapons at their disposal, and we've seen them on full display already here today. 52 to nothing. And Craig Walker, who's been a standout with his kickoffs today, now try to boot another one. And again, it goes into the end zone. You know, I was talking to Tim Rebo about this, but a guy who had 60 touchbacks and 80 kickoffs and, and as a senior in high school. Now, high school level, you're talking about what a 10-yard difference in kickoff. Not everybody can convert to the college level. Seems like he's acclimating pretty well. He's done a nice job, and that's a, that's a valuable weapon. Uh, when, you, when you know that you're going to kick it in the end zone, say, 75% of the time, uh, that makes it more difficult on the other team, having to go, you know, 80 yards, 75 yards, and plus you don't allow that big return. Let's see what Lincoln can get going offensively. First drive of this third quarter for the Blue Tigers, again, out of the MIAA, the Mid-American Intercollegiate Athletic Association of Division Two. This is Torrey Hicks on first down. And another nice stop made by Jarius Monroe. He's been terrific today. Sophomore to Laplace. Opening weekend for the Colonels. Uh, what a weekend it is, right? You got the first game of the year at home. Nice crowd on hand, even though the temperature's uh, you know, nearing the 39 degrees or so right now. But you've got baseball starting tomorrow. Double header. Will you be on that call? Will be on the call tomorrow? Won't be on that call. i got a got basketball okay. doubleheader. All right. Here is uh, Desmond Hunter handing off. Short gain. I think originally, right, the Colonels were going to play tonight, and then they ended up 
yeah, moving got, it. Got to move back a day. Yep. Move back the day for you know to kind of not conflict with football. And yeah, I'll tell you what, it's uh, there's a lot going on around this community and for a lot of schools around the country. But here at Nichols, having so many sports going on at once, baseball, softball. You mentioned both basketball teams in full swing. The men are you know, certainly in the mix of things for a conference championship in hoops. This is a second down, making a third down and nine now. Hunter to throw, pressure coming. He eludes Gansey in the backfield, still on the move. And out of bounds. Shy of a first down. Now, not only do you have the uh, opening weekend for baseball and hoops and everything else, you also have a big construction project going on here. You know, And I know we'll talk plenty more about that here, but got a big construction project in the south end zone, and which is going to pay dividends for the Colonels in, in years to come. Yeah, we'll get to the, the Book Vault family complex and Yeah, what with, with Trey Book Vault and, and they what they have done with that donation has just been remarkable. We'll certainly get to that later on. Here's a punt from Clayton Winkler, who's had his struggles today, but a little more consistent over these last couple. That'll take a nice Lincoln bounce. And downed at about the thirty two. Looks like Grenier is going to get a chance to go back in there at quarterback. Both he and Lindsey Scott have been right on the money tonight. So Cohen Grenier will get set to come back in. The Richard Jr. from Destrahan. He threw two passes, Ronnie, in that first half, both for touchdowns. <laughs> Can't do any better than that. First two career touchdowns for him. Again, only through. Six passes last year, well, in 2019, as a redshirt sophomore. Nichols begins from its 32, up 52-0 early here in the third quarter. And a short gain this time. That's Colin Guggenheim, first carry for the freshman out of Kenner, John Curtis product. He was a four-year starting quarterback. Led them to back-to-back -back Division I championships. He was the MVP game of both. And, well, obviously this team is pretty set at quarterback, so they have him playing in the backfield. Well, if you play quarterback at John Curtis, you're, you're pretty much a running back anyway. So he's, he's right at home. And he can catch it. There he is. Nice snatch and gets to about the 40-yard line where he's brought down by DeAndre Skinner. So... Third down and short upcoming. We've seen a lot of the younger players on this Nichols team contributing today. Guggenheim just the latest. Third down and two. Or Cohen Grenier. And up the middle goes... Julian Gums, he's short of a first down. Nice job by that Lincoln defensive front. Standing strong in there. You know, one guy we haven't mentioned who's done some nice work, E.J. Gisa, senior from American Samoa. He's had a couple stops at the junior college level. And that was uh, Ronnie Jackson, by the way, on the carry as well. Yeah, Coach Rebo getting a number of different players in there. Guggenheim, Jackson. Jackson, a redshirt freshman out of Edna Carr High School by way of Texas San Antonio. You know, people wonder why this team, Ronnie, can continue to churn out titles in the Southland and win consistently. It's because they get winners in high school. Ronnie Jackson, three straight titles, then to Carr. We yep. talked about Guggenheim, back-to-back -back championships. They find players who have that winning pedigree. Well, Tim Rebo knows through all his years recruiting for the Raging Cajuns and then coaching, of course, and growing up in the Destrahan Norco area. The, of the which game, is, 47, offset, five yards, replay, fourth down. Which is a suburb of New Orleans that, you know, it, he knows that the talent is within a 90-mile radius of Thibodeau. And if you just throw a blanket over that area and get all the guys that, you know, that you can, you know, if they're not playing at a, at a, in a Power 5 conference, they've got a chance to get in there and recruit them and, so far, so good, and that's why their teams are uh, so good and why their preseason pick to win it all again in the Southland. After the delay game, Craig Walker to punt. That's a bad snap, and he falls down. This is trouble. 
he'll just fall on top of it in Lincoln with a great chance to get points for the first time tonight. Well, offense and defense have been fantastic for the Colonels. Special teams has not been special at all other than the kickoff coverage. Uh, so, that you know, that, that'll be something that Tim Rebo's, you know, will uh, get a chance to, to work on and harp on and film study and during the week. As all coaches love to do with big blowout wins, they always love to have a few things that don't go perfectly. And yeah, we've seen four missed extra points, a couple of bad long snaps, and, and now the defense will try to come up with something. The Lincoln offense trying to get into the end zone for the first time tonight, 8.56 in the third. Desmond Hunter still the quarterback. Hex in motion. They fake it to him. Good sign to see Franklin back in, but he is stood up. And that defense flying around again. Miles Veen, another stop for the fifth-year senior out of New Orleans with some help from Elijah Reams. Well, that went bad for Lincoln. They had the ball first and goal inside the 10. And on the very first play, they lose like four or five yards. This is their best scoring chance that they've had today. So it's a second down in well, it's a second down and goal now from the 12. After a four-yard loss officially. They motion Franklin out of the backfield. Hunter with a little seam to run. That quickly converges, and Glenn Thurmond makes the tackle. Someone who Tommy Ryback, he is just so high on. Junior out of Laplace, so steady, a technician, he calls him. Did a nice job of closing quickly. For a big guy, Thurman goes six foot two seventy five. Another Rummel product out of that great program in New Orleans. Played all fourteen games in twenty nineteen with six starts. Third down and goal from the nine for Lincoln. Enrico Gilliam is the receiver at the bottom of your screen. The roll hunter. He's in all kinds of trouble. Floats it toward the end zone and knocked away incomplete. Perry Gancy creating havoc in the backfield. And it's fourth down. That was just impressive, impressive for Desmond Hunter to even just get this ball off, just to give his team a chance. And it looks like the Blue Tigers had an opportunity, maybe come up with it. And now they're going to settle for a field goal to see if they can at least get on the scoreboard. Javier Moreno, sophomore from Malaga, Spain, was 0 for 5 in 2019, his first year in Jefferson City. He did make 12 of his 15 extra points, and they've got a flag before the snap, and this is going to be on Lincoln. Now they call the timeout, and now they're going to debate on whether the flag came first or the timeout came first. They're going to talk about it. Substitution violation on the offensive team before the timeout was called. Five yards, fourth down. Well, the Hasn't Blue been easy for the Blue Tigers it tonight. It has not. <laughs> they had first and goal inside the 10, and now they're trying to make this field goal a little bit more interesting. This will be, a, what, about a 32-yarder? Yeah, they'll spot it right around the 22. So a 32-yard try for Javier Moreno. It's got the distance, and it is good. Javier Moreno, his first career field goal with Lincoln, and the Blue Tigers are on the board here in Thibodeau. Well, exciting for that young man. That was a really nice kick, and we have not seen some very good kicks tonight. So Moreno... Didn't matter. The five yards backed him up, and he booted that 32-yarder right through the middle. And he had that one with plenty of leg. So 52-3, to 7-17 to go here in this third quarter. Continuing to see bodies shuffled in and out for Nichols as they test out who they have and work towards their Southland Conference opener next week against Lamar. You know, it was worth noting, Ronnie, there were two games scheduled for this opening weekend of Southland play. Nichols was playing a game really in part because they wanted to be fresh for Lamar and also to you know, get that game under their belts that the other Southland teams playing week one would have. Turns out that they will end up being the only team besides McNeese to play have played a game before next weekend. So 
worked out pretty well for Tim Rebo. Yeah, and, and he was really adamant about getting this game in. I mean, as it turns out, Lincoln University of Missouri was probably the sixth or seventh team that they were working with to try to get a game and uh, give Tim Rebo a lot of credit and, and give Lincoln University a lot of credit. They found out they were playing this game about three weeks ago. Here's Tevin Bush. And out right around the 32-yard line. Looks like Cohen Grenier will get back out there for Nichols. It's kind of a, but you know, for uh, Lindsey Scott, it's a little bittersweet, right? You're like, man, man, I've been sitting around waiting for years to play quarterback. I know we're winning big. I know I'm the starter, but man, I want to get some reps. But Tim Rebo not wanting to take a chance to get him injured either, as the, the meat of the schedule is coming up. A little past the midway point of this third quarter. On first down, Cohen Grenier on the keeper. And now he'll throw late. And Tevin Bush with a nice back shoulder catch. Nice throw and catch there and a gain of 13 yards. Well, Grenier's gotten some experience sitting behind and learning from Chase Forcade and has picked up the offense very well. He's a very smart guy. You talk with Rob Christoffel, always impressed about what he puts in in the film room. And just about seeing him do it again, like we talked about with the bullets flying. And getting a chance today, he's already got a couple touchdown passes. On second down, there's Tevin Bush. And finally pulled down inside the 45 of Lincoln. Whether it's Bush, whether it's Franklin, they run that... That speed handoff really well, and, and and better than that are the big receivers that the Colonels have blocking downfield. First home game here at Gidry Stadium for Nichols in 447 days. You go back to that round one FCS win over North Dakota. 16-2 and two, their last three years here at home. They've won 15 of 16 regular season home games. Cohen Grenier. Late toss to Tevin Bush. Finds a way forward, still on the move, and just slides down. <laughs> That's a whole lot of work for about seven yards. Bush, uh, I think, might have strained something. He kind of took himself out of the game. I hope he's, uh, I hope he's okay. We'll keep an eye on him. Now That's the last thing you want in a game like this, right? Just get everybody out healthy if you're Nichols. He looks to be okay right now as he walks off. So Carrington moves into the slot. Now Quincy Cage is out there as well. Here's a pitch. Oh, my. Yeah, that looks like a horse collar on Marquise Albert, the redshirt freshman out of New Orleans. And that'll move it forward for Nichols. Boy, Albert, fortunate that uh, he didn't get hurt and it didn't amount to anything. Personal foul, face mask, number 15 on the defensive team. 15 yards, automatic, first down. That was Albert on Albert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot Albert on Marquise Albert. Not a good penalty on Lincoln. and Can't gift a team like Nichols any more than they've already gotten here today. So move it to the 20 and to the Louisiana propane red zone. Nichols up 52-3, looking for more as we hit the five-minute mark to go here in this third quarter. Marquis Albert, the back alongside Cohen Grenier. Against a blitz, over the middle, contested catch what is catch. made. Oh, boy, what a grab. That is... An impressive snag by Wap Jason. Devontae Wap Jason. Personal foul. Roughed in the passer, number 34 on the defense. Had the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. How about the catch by Wap Jason? I thought he was interfered with. I thought the defender got there before the football. And uh, regardless, 
he fought off the defense and squared up to the, re- the quarterback and made a heck of a catch. We've talked about all the playmakers in this receiving core, Ronnie. We haven't even mentioned him yet today. He's the Mississippi State transfer. Mm-hmm. First and goal to go from the three for Nichols. Grania handing off, and Ronnie Jackson plunges in, and six more for the Colonels. Ronnie Jackson with his first career touchdown run. Giant hole on the left side. Great job. He ran behind the All-American you mentioned in the first half. P.J. Burkhalter, that left guard, a massive man over there, 330 pounds, opened the way, and Ronnie Jackson went untouched into the end zone. Gavin Lassine, extra point, is good. So he gets back on track. Another rushing score for Nichols. Was just checking this out a second ago, Ronnie, but you do the math on it. You've got a couple quarterbacks who have thrown for touchdowns, three different running touchdowns from running backs, three receivers have caught one. So, yeah, I'd say a lot of guys have gotten involved here tonight as Tim Rebo wanted. Yeah, he came in here with the game plan of, of trying to get everybody on the field, get in on offense, try to get everybody touches. As we look here at the depth chart, there were one, two, three, four, five, six running backs listed. I believe all but this. Has Hurst touched it? Hurst is not. No, I don't not think yet. he's played yet. But the five of the six running backs that we know of have all carried the football. Impressive all around performance. Again, you're doing it against a Division II school who, as we've mentioned, has not practiced a whole lot and just trying to see what they have. But still, just watching this offense work and the weapons they have. Our Parish Wealth Partners drive summary. Six plays, 68 yards, capped by the three-yard Ronnie Jackson touchdown run, the first of his career. Torrey Hicks waves for the fair catch for Lincoln just past the 10. Five different receivers, I believe, have have caught passes from Colonel quarterbacks. And uh, yeah, five receivers, and then you got three running backs have made catches too. So yeah, the wealth has been spread around. Yeah, Rob Christofel going to be very happy with with what he's seen in the balance with what the Colonels have shown. They, you know, they've made their opponents for the future have to prepare for a lot tonight. And knowing him, there's a whole lot more in the toolbox he can go to also, who is not showing Lamar here today. Desmond Hunter handing off. Torrey Hicks is drilled. Big hit made in the backfield. Bryce Odema. I beg your pardon, actually. That's Jacob Parker. Sophomore linebacker out of New Orleans. It's hard with those plates on the back with those eights and nines. Under four to go now in this third quarter. Again, Nichols rolling here at home. Lamar next weekend. They've got Lamar to open and then a couple on the road. So that game in Thibodeau is so crucial getting off to a good start. And their Southland opener. Oh, another blown up play. Pig cage. He was at Torrey Hicks before Hicks even knew the ball was coming. Tommy Ryback, Ronnie, was mentioning his instincts. He's got instincts you don't see from a freshman. No, he's a, he's a young man who just a super aggressive, athletic, flies around the football field and, and, and just has a nose for a football. I mean, and that goes to that instincts thing, but it starts with just that reckless abandonment with which he plays with. Big loss makes it third down and 17. And up to Franklin, who has come back into the game That's after taking that injury earlier. Yes, yeah, certainly good. We were talking about Lincoln earlier, Ronnie. They're only playing three games, at least as of now this spring. They were trying to play more. But this one in Thibodeau, March 6th, they'll go to Texas Permian Basin. They'll go to East Central in Oklahoma on April 10th. So I think part of this. Maybe they can pick up something along the right, way. is kind of being that emergency schedule Exactly. Team. I think part of giving, I think you do two things by giving yourself time. Number one, for a team that's trying to rebuild, Give yourself time to watch the tape, assess, make sure you're healthy, right, so that you can actually play these games at full strength. And that's a 
punt off the side of the foot here for Winkler. Nichols will just let it roll and picked up at about the 47. And that was almost like one okay. of those stingers you see in golf with a two iron. Look like a ground ball <laughs> through the five hole. I was thinking like my like a like a two iron on the fairway. You hit you know not I, even an inch off the ground. I'm just gonna say this. I mean, as good of a field goal kicker as the as as they have, Javier Moreno. I mean, I gotta give him a shot, right? Hey, Javier, I know you can kick field goals so good. Let's let's put it. Let's let you punt it Drop a little bit. Drop kick it or something, right? I mean, I gotta believe Javier can. <laughs> Can give you a little more consistent effort. Nothing against uh, the punter they have now. He's a better safety than he is punter. All right, we've got a new quarterback in for Nichols. Andrew Robison now gets a couple snaps. Richard freshman from Luling. And there is Troy Hurst, who we were mentioning earlier, the transfer out of Memphis. So Nichols is going deep into their repertoire now. Nice gain there for Hurst. Robison, a guy who is a native of Luling, Hanville products. He was actually the youngest high school player ever to throw a touchdown in a varsity game. Threw a touchdown when he was 12 years old. Wow. And turned that into a great career at Hanville. I mean, 12 years old, boy, that's, that's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> maybe that's why he wears the number 12. And off here, Troy Hurst, big hole. Oh, he bangs off the referee. He's still on the move. He's got the edge, and Troy Hurst will take it in for a touchdown. What a run! 38 yards. And his first touchdown as a colonel. And 65 on the scoreboard for Nichols in the season opener. Watch the replay as Hurst bursts through the middle and then like pinballs off the uh, the official out to the left and is able to get a good seal block, able to outrun the defense to the corner of the end zone. But great balance by Hurst not to, to go down when he got ran into the zebra. Hurst, another weapon. There is Gavin Lassine's point after, which is good. So he takes it 38 yards. A guy who Rob Christopher was raving about just how explosive he is. We saw that on full display. Mainly on defense and special teams, Ronnie, for Memphis with how loaded they are. They won a uh, American Conference title just a couple years ago, but he, he can have some opportunities with the way he can play in the backfield. Listen, they've got choices galore. Um I mean, Troy Hurst showed some some speed right there. I mean, but you you I mean, obviously Julian Gums is your veteran power back. He's a guy that's an All American, but I've been impressed with every other guy we've seen tonight, and they and most of them have the ability to catch the football out of the backfield as well. So, future uh, future running backs for the Colonels are in good hands here. And you think, too, which is kind of crazy, but Julian Gums still only a junior. Yeah. So he's got a, yeah. another year. And, of course, with the way that the NCAA is doing it this year, everybody with that extra year of eligibility. So you figure that, I guess, this class of seniors in high school really the most affected by that because they won't have the benefit so with how many I guess, rosters So will be. you can maybe set this straight for me. So in, in Gums's case, he's a junior. Right. When we get to the fall – He'll still. He won't. Will he be still considered a junior yeah, or be a I don't, senior? I don't, I don't know what the. I don't know what the label would be. I think they probably will move you to a senior, but give you that extra year based on the listing. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how they word it. But the bottom line is, we're gonna. They, the Colonels have a log jam at <laughs> running back, and it's it's a good thing. I would I would say so. Seen a bunch of different ball carriers Holy, and number forty five on the return team, ten yards, first down. It's a hold called on uh, Cody Bagby of Lincoln. All right, so Desmond Hunter back to work. We've seen some good from him. We've seen some bad. He is five for seven through the air. For a total, Ronnie, of three yards. Wow. Mm. Just how many losses there have been off screen passes and tackles in the backfield. It's there good, we go. It's a good throw on the edge there, and Torrey Hicks has the catch near the 25-yard line. It's been that kind of night throwing the football for Lincoln. We're getting excited about a five-yard out route that it was completed, well-timed.
You know, we were talking earlier about Malik Hoskins and Lincoln and their goal to find an extra opponent. They found one in Nichols. They got that call. Obviously, the Colonels, we've talked about how excited they were to just schedule a game as a uh, running play here is swallowed up again in the backfield. The Colonels just ball flying around. Ball came loose. Oh, that ball. Did they roll out a fumble officially? Looks like they did. Wow. <laughs> it is a fumble recovery. Ruling on the field is a fumble by Lincoln recovered by Nichols in the immediate action. That's Jacob Parker picking it up. Sophomore linebacker out of New Orleans. Comes up with the football and another turnover here on Lincoln, their fourth. It's bad to worse again. Well, the Colonels have been uh, doing a nice job on defense, stripping, causing the fumbles. I think, how many turnovers? For four, I, I have them down for four turnovers. Yeah. Considering how many, how many there have been, I could have blinked and I missed one, but right now four. Andrew Robison back in. On first down, he'll pitch it. This is Guggenheim. Fumble was forced by Zach Bernard, another player that Tommy Rybacki has been raving about. Freshman out of Mandeville, Lakeshore High School product. He was a 4A All-State pick. Tell you what, this defensive line, albeit we factor in, Ronnie, the competition they're playing against, but replacing Soli Lesh was number one on the agenda for Tim Rebo and company Correct. as far as the defense goes. There's some speed. There's some talent. It'll be interesting to see, you know, against the you know Division One Lamar next week. But some of these young guys, they have. There's some talent in this defensive front. There's no question. They have. They've been very physical tonight, and uh, I would expect that. Hey, because you've got so much depth and competition at practice, it shows in the game. We head to the fourth quarter. All nickels with 15 minutes to go in their season that is over. The end of the third quarter. And off on second down, Colin Guggenheim. And he's inside the 15-yard line. Start of this fourth quarter, Jack Benjamin, Ronnie Rance with you. Nichols rolling over Division II Lincoln, University of Missouri, in their season opener. A game that has been more than 14 months in the making for Tim Rebo and this Nichols football team. And it certainly feels great. For this team to be back on the field, start of this unique, to say the least, unique FCS spring season. Andrew Robison still the quarterback. On second down, Guggenheim off the pitch. And you can see the burst he has. The former quarterback in high school. 
And he takes it inside the 10 to about the 5 for first and goal. Colonels have 407 yards of total offense in this game to only 37 by Lincoln. Lincoln's throwing the ball 16 times for 17 yards. First and goal at the 5. Robison throwing back shoulder, wanted Devontae Jason in a flag. Coverage from Aeneas Tibbs, the freshman out of St. Louis. Tibbs basically tackled Jason in the end zone out there in the corner. Pass interference, number 13 on the defensive team. Ball replaced at the two-yard line, automatic first down. You know, I actually had the number wrong there. That was, now there's not a 13 on Lincoln, so. Looked like it was, I think it was. It was. Yeah, it, it, was it, it is 13. Yeah, it is we 13. just don't have them on our, <laughs> on our roster. So well, mis Tim, mystery man. Yeah, Tim's, the, uh, Tim's was listed as the corner on that side of the field. So here's Robison handing off. Guggenheim into the end zone. And how about Nichols going over 70? In the season opener, 72 points up on the board. Colin Guggenheim gets in on the party. His first touchdown is a colonel. A little inside handoff, a little draw play kind of to the right side, and Guggenheim who scored a bunch of touchdowns in uh, high school. John Curtis gets one here in college. Extra point is good that time. Always feels good for Nichols when that goes through the uprights. And it is a 73-3 ball game here with 13.43 to go. Well, we were talking earlier about the Book Vault family, family Athletic Complex and the new building that is going to be installed here at Nichols. You can see the, uh, the, the, re the renderings on it, a 2 point. Five million donation from Nichols' former assistant coach and businessman Trey Bookfault in June of 2019. Largest gift in Nichols' history, in the institution's history, I should say. They're building a football operations center, new locker room offices, meeting rooms, training rooms. A total project, Ronnie, costing about six and a half million. And it's just the next step in not just this program, but this athletic department's drive to continue to raise the bar, as Jonathan J.T. Terrell, their athletic director, talks about. Well, they already do a great job recruiting here for Nichols football. That that donation by Trey Buckvault is going to go a long way to, to ensure that this football program is on solid ground for years to come. And also all the other sports are going to get the benefit and use the weight rooms and the meeting rooms and things like that. Yeah, so many factors that are going to be part of the complex of course those meeting rooms the amount of different programs that can benefit as part of it is another fumbled uh, kickoff return here from Hicks and I think they might have waved it dead was there a fair catch called no if there would have been that would have been a penalty for going but I, maybe I when know. he when they whistled it down for something I don't know if his knee touched when he went to pick up the football but Nonetheless, it'll be uh, Lincoln's ball at the 19, it looks like. But going back and, and kind of tying a you know, bow and t talking about the, the, the book fault, you know, family athletic complex, you, you look at the, the Nichols facilities right now, and, you know, Tim Rebo and his coordinators are all in this tight space in, in the building, and to be able to spread those guys out, to have different teams that can come and benefit, um, the, the different training rooms we talked about, the – ability for sports medicine and that factor in it it's it's the latest development this program again we've talked about the rise that they have made back-to-back -back southland titles three straight fcs appearances these are now when you can get these kinds of gifts from unbelievable donors like this gift is you start talking about another little factor that can push you towards that national championship conversation trying to move towards that level and that's what Tim Rebo keeps, uh, that's the message he keeps pounding and why you see boosters starting to step up is that, all right, it's now not about just winning, it's about winning championships. Desmond Hunter looking deep for Hicks. That hit the back of, looked like Sean Hall. Yeah. That hits off him and a couple of colonels and a chance at it. They surround it there. But, you know, we've talked about Tim Rebo and, and the job that he's done now in his sixth year. Year after year after year, 
He has brought in Louisiana players, not just Louisiana players, but it, it's the radius. It's the River Parish, as he talks about. It's all, what, 90 minutes or so around this yeah. Thibodeau radius that he draws. I think you were saying, what is it, 88 players that are south of I-10? Right. And, you know, Dick, I-10 runs through the bottom third of Louisiana from Lake Charles to Lafayette, Baton Rouge, New Orleans. And they have just kind of, all their guys come from basically that region. Oh, this is a dangerous play here. That looked like it was picked off. And intercepted. Ruling on the field is an interception. First down, Nichols. Now that's a terrific play by, let's see. Now there's not a 56 on the roster today. Ashton Robinson's 58. <laughs> it looked like it was Ashton Robinson. Now he just ripped it out of his hands. Nice play by Robinson. Tried to set up a screen to the backside, and he was there for the interception. Freshman out of New Orleans, De La Salle product. Three-time All-District. Tommy Ryback, he just praising how versatile he is and can throw him into different spots. Andrew Robinson is back out there as quarterback. First and goal at the seven. Albert trying to jump over the entire offensive line. Didn't get much. Yeah, Albert looked like he was trying to cross the end zone goal line as <laughs> he kind of dove over the top. <laughs> Colonel's running a little clock, probably going to snap it when it gets inside five seconds. Approaching 12 to go. Robinson hands off. And this is Albert into the end zone. Or was... Yep. That is Marquise Albert. His first touchdown is the Colonel. The Idaho transfer gets into the end zone. And how about Nichols? A point away now from 80 on the night. Albert, nice job. Vision bouncing to the left and then turning on the Jets to run away from the defense. And everybody having fun. It's a dancing mo mood. Now, we've had four missed extra points tonight. This is, the, this is the most important one. For 80. Lassane drilled it. Eighty points with 12 minutes to go. So here's Nichols' upcoming schedule. We've talked about Lamar. Always a, a challenge. That is the Southland opener for Nichols a week from Saturday. And then two on the row in Northwestern State. And I think everybody around the country really has that Sam Houston matchup at Huntsville on the 13th markdown. A Sam Houston team, we've talked about it earlier, trying to get back to the FCS playoffs. It's been a little while for them. They have been so good under Casey Keeler the last few years. That bye week on March 20th. And then finishing with two of three at home. The, River, the Riverbell Classic, Ronnie, on the 10th against Southeastern. Rare to have a 3 p.m. Riverbell Classic. <laughs> in, in what could be a hot April day, right? Normally, that game's played around Thanksgiving. It's cold, it's chilly, it's rainy. Instead, might be beautiful weather April 10th. Now, this conference, again, only seven teams playing, so a six-conference team schedule, but... You've got three teams, quote-unquote, ranked inside either the, the Athlon Sports or one of those coaches' polls at the start of the year. So between Southeastern, Nichols, and Sam Houston, there's plenty of strength to get a couple bids into the FCS playoffs, again, which is down to 16 teams this year. But you've got to get off to good starts. Nichols got off to a good start today. They've continued it all throughout. And they get another nice special teams play from Caleb Lee, a redshirt freshman from New Orleans, and of Edna Carr. Eighty points on the board for Nichols. That's uh, I don't care who you play. That's fun. You see uh, all the freshmen through seniors, everybody dancing, having a good time. The fans in the stands are having a good time. Doesn't feel quite as cold. When your, tone, when your team scores 80. So here's the Lincoln offense. They've only mustered up a field goal here today. 
It has been tough sledding against this Colonel defense. Not a whole lot of room all night for Hosea Franklin, who again was the MIAA's leading rusher a couple years back at the Division II level. Look, when your offensive line can't block for you against <laughs> this defensive front, not a whole lot you can be asked to do. He got banged up earlier. He's yeah, back they're, they're in the gonna, game. They're going to take him out. I mean, he's coming up a little bit l gimpy, and I mean, you got a couple. And they're gonna, they've got at least two more games. I know they're going to try to add to their schedule, but if you want to have any chance to win those or be competitive, you got to have Franklin. So they got him out of the contest. Malik Hoskins was telling us he's a quiet, on it. he's a quiet kid, but works so hard. Desmond Hunter is run out of bounds by Jacob Parker. Right around the 25-yard line with about 11 minutes to play. But, I mean, the year that Franklin had a couple years back, and that's the Division II level, but he was a Don Hansen Division II All-American. He was an honorable mention at least. Had 251 rush yards in their opener against Washburn. So when you have a workhorse back like that, the question, I think, for Malik Hoskins going forward, can he find a way to develop a passing game? Can he get a quarterback in there who fits his system? And yeah, He's still trying to build it. It's only his first year as a full-time head coach. He took over a team. Again, he was the interim coach, so trying to get his recruits in there will be step one. Short running play here, and then, of course, he's got the pandemic season, so hard to judge him on this, this three-game campaign. He needs a little time to do his thing in Jefferson City. Yeah, it's um, it's almost like, for, you know, for Nichols, they're playing for something. They're playing for a conference championship. They're playing for a national championship. For Lincoln, this is almost a glorified spring. I mean, it's just an extended glorified spring. They're more about trying to get ready for the fall and get prepared for there uh, than they are what's happening right now. Always a mystery when the punting unit is out there for <laughs> Lincoln. <laughs> This is a better one from Clayton Winkler. And a fair catch waved for and taken by Aldontre Davis, who we haven't mentioned yet today. He is yet another Division I transfer out of TCU, a guy who has not gotten a target yet today, but another one that Tim Rebo has been high about okay. in the receiving core. All right, so now do you think do you think Tim Rebo tells his team don't score? I mean, it's 80-3, to three and, and at some point – you know, it's kind of like, Ugh, we don't want to run it up. I'm wondering if Tim Rebo had that had those instructions like, hey, if you break away, just just get down. Now here's a look at some of the FCS storylines we had coming into this season. We were talking about this earlier, but 92 of the 127 FCS teams playing. Another quarterback is on for Nichols as Ronnie Jackson eh, works to get back to the line of scrimmage. So Leonard Kelly has come out of quarterback, the freshman. So as far as this FCS spring in terms of how it's going to work, first off, we don't totally know. We'll have to see the way it plays out. But we do know that they're down from 24 to 16 FCS teams in the playoffs. The Ivy League MEAC opted out. Those are two leagues that typically are not in the FCS playoffs anyway. But look, everybody, year after year, it doesn't matter if you play in the spring, the fall, autumn on Mars, you got to beat North Dakota State. That's just the way it works in the FCS. Nichols. Found that out the hard way straight on in Fargo last year in round two, and uh, at least in 2019 in round two. Everyone trying to get to that level as uh, Ronnie Jackson has a couple more yards. So the question becomes, what will it take for someone, I'm not saying Nichols, but someone to knock off North Dakota State because James Madison, Ronnie, I don't know if you watched that game, they gave them all they could handle the championship in 2019. It still wasn't enough. I mean, they are a beast. Now, you do have a different quarterback. Uh, right. Trey Lance will be going to the draft. He, Lance played one game in the fall, the <laughs> declared pro. So you have uh, an inexperienced quarterback. That's, that's your only hope if you're a team playing North Dakota State. And off this time is Brooks Thomas Ooh. on an end around and He's drilled around the 47-yard line. I'll tell you someone who's very happy. Usual color analyst for me on radio, Seth Thomas, in the booth to our left. That is his nephew. <laughs> you can see him smiling through the glass right now. Brooks, a, a nice little player, works so hard. Redshirt freshman out of Morgan City. He went to Central Catholic. 
He just loves being on this team, and Tim Rebo just raves about the kind of teammate he is and the player he is getting rewarded with a touch. Does bring up fourth down here for the Colonels. This is Matt Martin, a backup punter, and places it well inside the 25. Not a very long punt, but directionally well done. So going back to, the, you were mentioning Lance only playing the one game. The one game actually, Ronnie, was against Central Arkansas, one of the uh, four teams in the Southland who played uh, a fall season. Got to see him one final time, likely going to be, I think projections have him, what is it, maybe a f number five or number six pick possibly. Right. You never know. We've seen people slide even higher than that. You know, Josh Allen, the way he moved up at Wyoming a few years back. Or well, his old uh, former North Dakota State alum, Carson Wentz, right. went first overall. Now a new home as the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts right. next year after a big trade with the Eagles yesterday. But it's worth noting in the FCS, not just North Dakota State, but the Missouri Valley Football Conference is always so deep. We've talked about the Southland. Northern Iowa and South Dakota State are actually playing tonight. This game and that one are the only two. That one is in Cedar Falls. I was trying to check a, a scoreboard on it earlier. But that's a top five matchup you get right off the bat. So Here's Torrey Hicks for Lincoln. We've seen him do some nice things both on the ground and in the passing game, and he breaks free again. Still loose on the sideline. And give him a gain of about 20 across the 45. Number five, South Dakota State, by the way, leading UNI 17-7 in the third quarter in a top five matchup. But look, again, week after week in the FCS this spring, Ronnie, you better bring your A game because a condensed season, only five at-large bids, and there's going to be some good teams who just cannot get into the playoffs because of, because of numbers. Uh, absolutely. Eight less spots, right, than normal. Ball start, number 80 on the offensive team. Five yards, still first down. Of the teams that normally play in FCS football that are not, they opted out. But three or four of them are perennial yeah, year in and year out yeah, five, powerhouses. Five teams from the 2019 playoffs. Montana State was a semifinalist back in 2019. Desmond Hunter tries to hand off to Franklin. Nichols is all over. They had three bodies around that. Just a question of who. And that one is scooped up by Jameer, Jamiron James. Ruling We've on the mentioned. field is a fumble recovered by Nichols. We mentioned Jeremiah as one of the starting linemen, and Jamiron makes his presence felt. He is a transfer from Tulane, native of New Orleans, De La Salle product in high school, and the redshirt sophomore gets another turnover for Nichols. Got a score update for you. South Dakota State leads... Northern Iowa, 17-7 at halftime. Yeah, I mentioned that just about a second ago. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was, I was locked in trying to get you the yeah. score with some stats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. So 10-point lead. We'll keep an eye on that one. Here's a big hole this time. Breaking free. There you go. Goes Donella Dare into the end zone. You got to go way down on the depth chart. Donella Dare springs loose and gets his first career score. So that answers the question. Did, did Tim Rebo tell his team, slide before you get in the end zone? The answer, no. 86 on the board. 86 points. I was starting to think earlier, do I need to dig into the record book for no. most? I, I, don't th I don't think so, but... Part of what I was thinking is, oh, well, well Coach, he's not going to run the clock out here, but of course not. Extra point is up and by, good. By the way, 87 and Nichols missed four extra points. All right. Should be 91. <laughs> you just, just had to. I, I knew you had to point that out. Just saying. <laughs> extra points through that time. Gavin Lassane's made a couple in a row here. So I'm just looking at the numbers here for Nichols. You've got. Hey, get the calculator out. One, two, five. We've got so eight different players and eight different running backs. So seven different running backs for a touchdown. Now, I guess Tevin Bush ran for a score, and then Lindsey Scott ran for a score. So eight different rushing touchdowns, six by running backs, one by a quarterback, one by a receiver. You've got three different receivers have cut a touchdown. And if my math is correct here, you've got 
And of those, what, 12 players who have scored a touchdown, Ronnie, about seven or eight, it's their first career touchdown. It's been a party. It's I'll been tell a party you, on I'll that tell, Nichols yeah. sideline. I'll tell you who the busiest man in the world is going to be tonight. Jamie Boost does the SID for Nichols having an update. Touchdown, high, career high, touchdown. Going through the entire media guide. <laughs> a lot of career highs tonight. No question. 87 to 3 with six minutes to go. Directional kick, fair catch from Franklin. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that there are 109 players listed on the roster. We won't know by the time we go off the air, but I would love to know how many of the 109 actually got in the game. Most of them. Yeah, I think they dressed. It was something around... Yeah, it's 87 that are allowed to dress for the FCS this spring. So so 22 players at a red shirt and are sitting out or whatever. Right. And within Injured or something like that. Yeah, this year they can travel. Uh, Coach Rebo is telling us you can travel with 63 this year. Compared, okay. it's, it's a lower number than usual because of COVID restrictions and spacing and whatnot. So, yeah, my guess would be if not all of those, maybe there's only one or two who haven't gotten in the game. I would assume everyone has gotten in the game tonight. Gotten, yeah. Yeah, it, it certainly seems that way. And that's great. You know, I mean, that, uh, these guys have been sitting around for six months waiting to play football for the most part. And you're rewarding all those guys that have stayed with your program and have worked so hard with all the stops and starts of COVID. You get them an opportunity to get in the game, get a touch, get a carry, make a hit. That's, that's, that's all you can ask for. Five and a half to go. Lincoln hoping to drive it down one more time. One of three games currently on their spring schedule. Next one will be in March against Texas Permian Basin. Catch made by Dreshawn Alston. And he is quickly hit by Tyreek Boyd, freshman out of Lafayette. A Como high school product. So as we wind this clock down today, Ronnie, kind of wrapping things up you know talking about Lincoln and, and what they've had to go through we spoke with Malik Hoskins and, and the way this program is rebuilding what can they take from from this game here today is it just a matter of look you saw what a great FCS team looks like in the way that you have to build obviously there are certain bright spots that he can look at but what do you think of the major takeaways for him and what's been obviously an eye-opening eye experience that'll be a penalty down there a little horse collar out of bounds and he'll yeah, pick up Sorry to cut you off. Cash made, by the way, by Calvin Wilson. Well, I think, you know, you, you, you kind of let your guys know, hey, th that's that's the bar. You know, that's where we'd Personal love to foul. be. Horse collar tackle, number 40 on the defense, 15 yards, automatic, first down. That's kind of where you want to be as a program. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's more about just getting reps, getting guys some opportunities, rewarding them for – being in your program, you're here to play football, and you got them a game. And I give them credit for scheduling a game. You knew it was going to be ugly. Probably didn't think it was going to be this ugly. But, you know, the takeaway is, hey, we played a good team. You guys, you know, gave them your best shot. Now let's regroup and uh, try to get better in a month from now. Desmond Hunter handing off to Hicks, and he is quickly met in the backfield. Looks like Bernard in on that stop again. A Lincoln University of Missouri team. Again, they play Division II, MIAA. We were talking about it perhaps being an FCS conference disguised as Division II football, but just a couple of powerhouse teams in there. So that their season, they'll prepare for the fall after playing a couple of games this spring. Malik Hoskins, again, first year as full-time head coach. He was the interim coach for them back in 2019, and Trying to build this program up. He's a guy with 23 years of experience. Here's a bad snap toward Hunter. Picks it up. Makes a decent throw over there to Charles Johnson. If you're Charles Johnson, you wanted to drop that ball, not catch it, because you just lost about six yards. That's going to be one of the hardest things as a player to do, to purposely drop a football, mm -hmm. even when you're you know five or six yards behind. I guess that's all a presence of mind type thing.
And this clock continuing to run. Under three minutes to go now in the game. Play clock all the way down to two. And Malik Time Hoskins out. will call timeout. Lincoln, they're first. Now look, 2.48 left. They want to get some more points on the board, no question. Plenty of time. There's a player on the field and I'm at, for Lincoln, number 78, the right guard. And they've got him listed. That's got to be a typo. It, it says, what, 5'9", 350, correct? Isn't that what it says on your chart? Yeah. Head? He's 6'9". <laughs> he's a, I mean, I'm serious. He's, a, he's the biggest guy. We get a shot at number 78 when they break the huddle over there. They've, they, that's got to be 6'9". You know what? I never even caught that typo. That's a good point. 6'9", Six Six <laughs> 350 pounds uh, out of, out of uh, Garden City Community College by way of Baltimore, Maryland. He, I saw him just come onto the field. And, like, it's one of the... That's one of the bigger people I've ever seen and, and, real, and up close and personal. It's funny you, you bring him up. I was, when we were talking to Malik Hoskins, we were asking him, give us three or four guys who you think can, can compete on this level, who down the road have a chance. And, look, he's already a senior, but he said, well, you know, this guy won't necessarily have, to have time because he's already a senior, but Tyrese Davis, with how big he is, that's, that's one load of a man. My God. Six <laughs> foot nine, 350 pounds. And they've got him in there at uh, one of the offensive lines. I'm trying to think they've got him lined up, I believe, at the – oh, he just stepped out. They just brought, took him out of the game. Hand off Torrey Hicks with room to run. And he breaks his way into the second level, still on the move and still running hard. I'll tell you what, give, give that young man a lot of credit. Number five, Torrey Hicks. He has carried the ball a lot, has had no, not much to show for it at all. He's got beat up a bunch and right there playing hard here down a bunch in the fourth quarter and almost took it to the house. Mention guys who can play at the Division One level. He was at Illinois State back in 2019, didn't play there, but... Was with the team and practicing. Here he is again. Just a, a speed demon if you talk with Malik Hoskins. Sophomore out of Kansas City. Started his career at Fort Hayes State. Another solid Division II program. Two years there. Didn't run the ball a ton. But Malik Hoskins said, hey, we want the ball in his hands 15 times tonight if we can. I'd say they're right around that number. He's ran it now. Yeah, 13, 13 rushes, three receptions. And here he is again. And brought down around the 15-yard line, Jamiron James once again in on that stop for Nichols. So under two minutes to go in the game now. Lincoln playing hard, trying to see if they can't get their first touchdown. Something to be said for that. Game, Absolutely. Game, game like this, 90 seconds to go. You've barely practiced. you got a team that's competing to the very end. Give a lot of credit to the coaching staff on that and the way that Malik Hoskins is going to build up this program. Here is... A second down run, a third down run. And not much doing there for Hicks. Jacob Parker's been doing a nice job in the second half. I'll bring up fourth down. So do you bring out Moreno now for the field goal, or do you go for it again? I think you give it up. I think they're going to go for it. I mean, you just you got your, your field goal. You got your point to, to make sure there's no goose egg in the score column. At this point, it's all about getting the touchdown. Play clock inside of 10. Hunter handing off again, and Hicks is stopped. Nothing doing there. Nichols holds. Jamiron James with Ashton Robinson. And with 33 seconds left, the Colonels can put a knee on this one and trying to start getting ready for Lamar next weekend. In the old victory formation, this will be one that uh, will get get folks buzzing around the country. 87-3. to It doesn't matter the score of the opponent. People are going to take notice <laughs> of that one and say, okay, let's see what's going on down there in Thibodeau. Yeah, 87 points is a whole lot. 
I really would have liked to have seen 91, though. If they had three, if they only make three of the four extra points, they get that 90. You don't see that every day. Leonard Kelly takes the snap, takes a knee, and that will just about do it. So Nichols, well, they're moving the ball back here for a second. I think there was – and they were confused on the spot of where to put the ball down here. They – I was going to say you don't have to snap the ball another time, and they won't. Clock will run down, and that will do it. In their season opener and their first game in 440 days. In Nichols' first game in 440 days, they win 87-3 to over Division II Lincoln University of Missouri. And they start this 2021 spring season with a bang and they are locked and loaded for their Southland opener next weekend against Lamar. Good news is they got everybody healthy, it seems. Nobody was, no major injuries. Everybody got touches. A lot of career highs tonight and first, first times ever scoring touchdowns in college. So fun evening for Tim Rebo's squad, and they got a, got a victory to get things started. Lindsey Scott, 12 of 14 through the air, 100, 153 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. You can see the numbers on a few receivers. Dejon Dixon only played a half, five catches for 80, and his score. Tevin Bush, his colonel debut, had a touchdown through the air and on the ground. Saw his explosiveness on full display in this one. Nichols. This is our brave new world, our new normal. The way we go to work every day has changed, and the power of connection has never mattered more. But we're here to keep business on, on to turn your home office into a powerhouse, on to make that meeting without going anywhere. On to plan your epic power launch. On to jumpstart your e-commerce engine. On to revel in the little things. On to make you unstoppable. This is the one thing we can do for you, and that's connecting you to work every day. Etel is on for business.